That was probably the most perfect pull that anyone's ever done. And it was from a guest, ladies and gentlemen. And ho, ho, ho! Wait. And a bottle of rum. That's what I meant. Not, <laughs> not, not, Santa, Claus. not Santa Claus, but ho, 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 and a bottle of rum, me mateys. And welcome to another hearty episode of Fried Rice Podcast. I be your host, Andy Rice, and we be getting fried. <laughs> Because pirates, I guess, and goonies. You'll get it later. With me, as always, he's... It's Michael! He's walked the plank many times. Sharks can't eat him because of the taste. They put him, they, they put him on, a, on an island and they gave him too much poison, like the Napoleon thing. I mean, maybe I'm just too much. It's he's trying to kill him, but he's not going to be alive, Larson! Ahoy, maybe. Thank you. We have Austin. He drove... He sailed the seven seas for nine months straight to get here today. Farrell. Check me out on Omegle. <laughs> and with us as always, it's Kyle. He works at Nabisco. They're making s- because of pirate stuff. <laughs> uh, What's up, man? I'm still alive. <laughs> He's still alive. Awesome. Well, that was a... That was a fuck show of an intro, but that's what you get with Friday Night's podcast. Uh, oh, welcome, guys. Um, so, this is uh, um, an episode that is going to be covering the Goonies later. Um, oh, no, no, this is supposed to be doing this. At, I'll do a header later. You'll hear it when I, when I post whatever. How are you guys all liking my uh, edits that I've been doing? Huh? Leave it in the comments below. They've... Uh, I haven't really been doing much editing, but I've been adding little commercials and shit. You guys have seen that. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a, a, our friedricepodcast.com. We have a number that you can call, which I don't have pulled up. I should have it memorized by now. But um, anyway, how was you guys' week? What's up? Anything new? Fucking awesome, dude. We went and saw Anthony Jeselnik at the Celebrity Theater. Me, Sean Perry, Kyle here. Uh, fucking awesome show. Got it right in. Really small theater. We were really close up to him. I remember when we went to see Theo Vaughn, he was like half a mile away. He just looked like a little ant. They had to look at the TVs to see him. Fucking so many good jokes. Classic on-brand Anthony Jeselnik. It might be his last special that he's doing. He's thinking of stopping. He doesn't know. But like the Did fact he say that, that, that during the show? Uh, he says it on his podcast, JRVP. Um, but, uh, dude, I had a fucking blast going to go see him. We went... Out before that, we, it was the late show because he sold out the first show, and then he added a late one. We almost oh. didn't see him. Went out and played Pop Stroke, which is like Tiger Woods' uh, little putt golf course. It's like it, what? Yeah, yeah. Tiger Woods has his own like. Mini where, golf. And where was this? Uh, uh, Phoenix. Okay, and he has a Tiger Woods has a putt putt golf in Phoenix. Yeah, it's like a bar restaurant, and there's two courses: the black course and the red course. And it's not like ridiculous mini golf with like windmills and pirate ships and glow in the dark shit. It's like. It just looks like a miniature, like, golf course, each one. There's, like, 36 holes. That's sick. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good fucking time. How much is it to get in? Uh, 35 bucks a person. For a round of nine, yeah. 18 well, you, holes? Yeah, you get the whole day. You can leave and come back as long as you have your ticket. Oh. You can, you can play as long as you want. Okay, that's sick. Yeah, that so, fun. like, top mini golf. Yeah, basically top <laughs> mini golf, yeah. Yeah, Legit. that's dope. Um... Okay, uh, how would you rank him? You've been to a lot more stand-up comics than I have. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you rank him as far as, like, um, stage presence? You know, like... like Because I, I saw... Who did I see recently? Not recently, but, but uh, like a year ago, I saw... Who's the, the pale Irish chubby guy? Um, uh, he's got... Uh, why can't I remember his name? He's, he's very famous. Uh... He looks like Philip Seymour Hoffman a little bit. Mm. Gaffigan? Gaffigan, yeah. Jim Gaffigan? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I saw Gaffigan. Mm. Uh, and he's funny, but I thought his opener was funnier. Like, his opener, like, that ten minutes that he did was funnier than, uh, you know, the other dude's, uh, like, full hour. Was he dirty Because Jim Ga- and Jim Gaffigan's clean? Is that cool? No, nope. the other guy was clean, too. Huh. Uh, he, it just, he was just, his, I liked his... Delivery better. I think it's because he had more to prove, right? Yeah. I feel like when you're younger, you know, like... But then again, you look at Dave Chappelle, and he's just classic, right? Like, he could just go up on stage and just casually do 45 minutes of just epic comedy, right? But, I don't know. 
But who? How would you stack them? Oh, dude, who's I've your seen, favorite? I've seen a lot of the greats. Uh, I would have to say Bill Burr was probably the best one. Uh, I've seen Joey Diaz, Bill Burr, Anthony Jeselnik, Theo Vaughn, Nick Swartzen, Big J Okerson, fucking a lot of greats. And yeah, Bill Burr was probably the best. Anthony Jeselnik's right up there with him. I haven't seen a lot of comics. I've seen Carlos Mencia. Wow. Back in the day, uh, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> who else? I saw some, oh, I forget his name, I wish I could blow it up because he's kind of a newer, or he's not as well known, but he's this guy from a foreign country, and his whole thing is he talks about uh, shit and what it means, it's like, this is the shit, this is shit, you know, like, and all the, like, just from a foreigner's perspective, it's difficult to, like, know what shit actually means, you know, like, it's like, well, shit, <laughs> like, but what does that mean compared so to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, but he's obviously funnier about it, but... Cool. Uh, anything about you, Mike? Uh, uh, let's see. Well, you know, I'm a big Chiefs fan. Watched the game last Sunday. Going to the Super Bowl next week. Hell yeah. Was uh, that playoffs last week? Yeah, that was play- That was the final game to the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl's next Sunday. Fuck yeah. So Saturday we're going to go up to uh, Vegas. Yeah, so you're going to actually going go to-, to Vegas to hang around all the excitement surrounding yeah. Super Bowl. I'm not going to the game, obviously. Obviously, it's $10,000 $10, a ticket. <laughs> But we're Our, close enough where we can run up to Vegas on Saturday. And yeah, fuck yeah. Who's going? going? Who's, me, my wife, No, my like the teams. Oh, the Chiefs and uh, the 49ers. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be. God, and it, 40, like, 49er fans, I feel like it's if you're a real 49ers fan, you live in San Francisco, you could get to Vegas. Oh, it's not easy. that bad. Yeah, it's a cheap flight for anybody. Wait, the so Niners and the Chiefs in Vegas? In yeah. Vegas. But I thought the Raiders went to Vegas. No, that's that, for a regular season. This is Super Bowl. So I guess I thought, they're using. I thought it was one of the two teams that goes. that's in their stadium no, or something. Oh. No, the playoffs is that way through the whole thing. The Super Bowl's always on a neutral site. Oh, oh I gotcha. I didn't know that so, either. Yeah, it's like it was in and Vegas, Vegas is probably a cool neutral site oh, to do it on. Cool, especially the new stadium there. That looks yeah. like I mean, it looks like Darth Vader, but whatever. <laughs> that should just be like the like where they do Super Bowl, and then yeah, I would think. Yeah, and, but then just if that. if Raiders happen to make it, then you I guess. Take it somewhere else, but right. uh, yeah, that'd be the only problem. You're going to be in the Although same building. But that, as happened, Tampa. Oh, sorry. that happened to the Chiefs a couple of years ago. Uh, they actually the Super Bowl was in Tampa, and Brady's year in Tampa, they went to the Super Bowl, so it was, they had home field advantage. Oh, so they didn't. They, that, did, they, they did, did not, not do that move neutral. the game. No, they well because it was they're playing like I think right now it's eight years in advance or seven years in advance. They know where the Super oh, Bowls are, just like uh, the World Cup, and yet they still picked. What was that place? Right. What was that random. place that it just it oh, killed Brazil? Thousand? No, 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 no. Oh, the last World the last Cup of uh, okay, yeah. uh, Qatar. I thought we were talking about the party. <laughs> the yeah, Qatar yeah, yeah. World <laughs> Cup, or has that happened yet? Maybe it hadn't happened. Maybe someone this year, maybe Wait, or something. Uh, sure. Look up, look up the Qatar, the Qatar World, World Cup, Cup uh, it is. because it's. Wait here, I'm looking it up right. Now. Oh, it was 2022. Okay, uh, how many workers died? What? <laughs> yeah, building that thing, dude. Oh, but uh, I'm sure you could do that for everything. No, because it's like that. Kind of, oh, because they were like you know, no, rough, no, you right? can't. If I were to go to well, like, like a bunch of people fall off skyscrapers when they build them, like in New York, it's it's hundreds thirty-seven of years. deaths d- linked directly to the construction. Uh, but yeah. sixty-five thousand migrant workers oh. have died. Since the World 6, Cup, 6,500. Oh, yeah, 6,500. Like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We, when we're actual news stuff, we probably can't be hyperbolic. <laughs> it's, uh, but that's uh, but what immigrant? Oh, migrant workers. I see. So what so I'm saying like, is, they uh, in our, they yeah. it was highlighted how horrific the conditions the were building conditions. this stadium. The stadium they built has no practicality, uh, no practical use now. Ever again, unless they decide to do another World Cup in Qatar, right. which they never will, because it's it, every country wants to host the World Cup. They built a stadium that is just now going to sit there forever, unless they convert it into something. But it's pointless. Well, uh, they've done that for, like for the Olympics when they built. Remember that place that it never snows, and they had the Winter Olympics, and they brought in all this snow and all these snow machines. Oh, and I didn't remember made that. But snow and built all these snow runs and brought in built a mountain. <laughs> Oh, like, see, that's insane, and I bet that that place has been ruined Olympics. from it. And yeah, it's, yeah, and, it's, and now it's trash because they they don't do the snow anymore. But they built a giant Matterhorn. <laughs> they built all, well, not really yeah. a Matterhorn, but the uh, what's the? No, yeah, the big. There snowy were mountains mountain. there already, but they were adding the uh, the runs on the mountains. slopes, slopes, and the and then the uh, 
the rails, those big tubular rails for the slaloms and all that stuff yeah. that goes down. They built all that. Yeah, it's insane. Because <laughs> it was not a winter place. I will say this. Uh, I could probably point to almost any modern building right. that's built in any first world country. Mm-hmm. And look at the report of deaths from construction. Right. And it is going to be not that. It's not going to be 37. No, no, no. No, no, no. Not as high. Mike, no. it is going to be zero at almost every building across the across these countries. Did anyone die making this house? No. Did anyone die making the buildings, all the buildings in it? Like, we would, that would be big news if a As worker a died. You're right, because it would be on a house building. But no, when we're talking about skyscrapers. Those guys get killed all the time. I'm going to look it up. I got to know. And guess what else does? Electrical line workers. One right down the street here died a couple years ago. How many skyscrapers? Not are in the world. Who cares? <laughs> Uh, uh, skyscraper. skyscraper builders. <laughs> Builder, builders die. <laughs> yeah. How many skyscraper builders? Oh, that die? was it. I was, but it was in the auto select, so it's obviously always been a problem. Okay. Two out of every five workers fell to their death while building the <laughs> skyscrapers in the twenties. Okay. So it's yeah. It, so we can't really talk about other people. But that's the twenties. That, but that's two out of what was that? Two out of five. That's the twenties. Okay. But guitar, I'm saying it was still America. Uh, I'm oh, saying yeah. they're just equal to us now. Guitar saw that and they're like, "Those are rookie numbers. We got to pump those up." <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean that's I, two out of five is an amazing stat. The thing is, though, it, um, with deaths on the job site, it's mostly like the highest rating is like from uh, people falling to their deaths. Actually, I believe. Is yeah, it really? I think so that's what it is. Common just thing? World's deadliest construction projects. Um, Oh, wow, this is, okay, a railway? Oh, built by Allied Prisoners of War. So we killed a bunch of prisoners of war building shit for us. Wow. Oh, wait, unless it means prisoners of war who were allied. Allied, oh, it could. It's not a world word, 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 how it's worded. Yeah, I can't tell, honestly. It's just built by Because allied. this is in the Burma, this is in Burma, Siam. So yeah. we, I don't did know, we I don't ha- know. <laughs> that's a... That's a that's an interesting Wait, what the? This is the fried rice pot. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? This is we're going down like a. What is this? No, stop it! Everybody just fucking we're funny now again. This is what funny shit that happened at work. What happened? Anything? So are you, Mike, are, you are you excited to be in the same building as Taylor Swift? Because I sure would be. Oh, well, he's, of course. Are he's you going to keep yeah. a clicker tally of every time she's mentioned or showed on the jumbo no, I, don't, I don't care how many times they show. Okay, so it's I. Like thir- we actually had this discussion, my wife and I, last night about that. Because what is people's problem with her? She's too successful, too pretty. What is her their actual problem? I've been reading up. She on... She has no choice if the camera shows her. That has nothing to do with her. So I I, I <laughs> I've been researching this actually. Um, I've been watching a lot of uh, a lot of commentators on this. So the last game, I don't know about the playoffs, but the one right. before that, the one that everyone got really upset about, mm-hmm. she was showed for a total. Of 25 seconds. Oh, see? For awesome. the entire game. 25 <laughs> seconds she was shown. And now, that's that's low because uh, because there was a game like a few weeks ago where she was shown, and I'm not kidding you, 33 seconds. Oh, wow. Uh, so I get it. I get it. And here's the thing. Not only is Taylor Swift bringing uh, – football dads and their kids together in a way that uh, almost nothing else ever has in sports where like now 12 year old girls are going up to their dad going like I want to watch the Chiefs game this week because uh, I want to see sure. I want to see the whole drama and everything that means that means football dad gets to watch a game with his kid who's actually invested in the game yet you look at right wing whatever a lot they're painting a picture that's pretty just, it's uh, not, like just not real though but she, they're painting a picture that she's a plant, that it's some sort of uh, government-placed psyop, that, like, because she's encouraging her uh, followers to vote, she hasn't told them who to vote for. She did back up Biden uh, during the election, but and she'll probably back him again. But she's, I mean, she's just because she's encouraging young people to vote, a lot of conservatives are losing their fucking minds right now because they know that if she gets the Swifties to the polling office, it's going to be high left numbers this 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 yeah. this election and so because of that alone i think there's a lot of 
people putting so much vitriol against this poor girl who like and again I saw some twisted though it's just completely twisted I saw some commentator say like oh you don't like seeing a pretty young successful actress uh, or or singer on the fucking screen like are you gay like that's what the guy on like that's what he was implying he's just like he's like so let me get this wrong you're just like you get it you're football whatever but then it shows a beautiful young like singer, like a hot chick that we can all you know like admire, you know whatever, who's successful and like all this stuff. Twenty five seconds, they lose their fucking minds. I don't know. I, I like I, whenever I go to a bar and there's a game on. There's always the like a group of dudes that has like a bunch of money on the game or something, and they're just the loudest people in the fucking bar the whole time. I like the fact that she's shown more because it makes those guys angry. <laughs> They, she pops yeah. on the screen like, get this fucking bitch off the screen, I got money on this. And yeah. they're just screaming. I bet you could... But if Kanye's there, they do the same thing. That's well, my point. If Kanye's there, they should kick him out because of all of his extremely okay. anti-Semitic views and that he's fucking pro-Hitler. I'm just saying. But you should have picked a different celebrity. Whoever the celebrity Anybody is, but Kanye. Say, no, pick a different one to use it as your example. <laughs> okay. If Jim Carrey was there. Okay. I mean, there were some allegations, but... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> allegations against everyone. Eminem. Uh, however, look the, the Dolly Parton. That's the uh, one. If okay. you want to, if, if you want to avoid all, no one's ever done anything uh, wrong. It's Dolly yeah, Parton. No, she's she's a angel, hero. Right. Yeah. She's an angel. Yeah. She does. So Dolly, Dolly Parton. Parton. If Dolly Parton shows up to the game, Dolly Parton shows up to the game. She would get more airtime than that, and that's the sad part. Is it's completely twisted. We're talking about and Taylor Swift specifically. She knew Andy Reid before she knew Travis Kelsey. Her dad is friends with Andy Reid from the Philadelphia days when Andy Reid was in Philadelphia. Okay. So this hate towards they would be it has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh uh if you look at Lakers games in the late 90s, early 2000s. Jack Nicholson. Exactly. I didn't even have to point out no. who's on the fucking court. It's Jack Nicholson. Right. And um, showed, I don't know, seven minutes a game maybe? On yeah. Television. Like I said, I don't watch sports because I'm not going to sit there for three hours to watch 20 minutes right. of football um, and a bunch of commercials. Sure. But I will say, uh, if this brings more people to... Why do people watch the Super Bowl? The commercials and the halftime. Right. It gets a big boost because people want to see the halftime spectacle. They want to watch those commercials. And there happens to be an exciting game that they can share with their football right. enthusiast friends and family. It's more right? about the party, right. It's the party. It's the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. It's like I've never given a shit about any any Super Bowl mm-hmm. come out ever. But I show up and I if everybody there is a Chiefs fan, I'm a Chiefs fan for the day and I'm and I'm with them and I want them to win just as bad as everyone else. Right. Or if it's you know if someone's there that I don't like, I'm definitely picking the other team. (laughs) Right. So you Uh, make a game out of that. That's what. But so do a lot of people. I'll bet. I'll do bets online for how long the national anthem is going to be sung for. Right. Or if there's going to be another power outage or something like that. Basically, you're saying you're every sports fan's wife. They, they go because they have to, and then they just have fun, and they root for that team. I'm not comfortable with that as a descriptor. <laughs> it's so I'm going to say no. Okay, but. But I would say I'm, yeah. I don't <laughs> right. know. Kyle, you a big sports guy? Um, Not really. Okay, well, let's get to know Kyle, because you have chosen not to speak this whole time, so I'm imagining you've been waiting for me to turn directly to you and start I'm asking questions. Not at all, man, not at all. So let's, what are you into? Are you a gamer? you st- um, well, like, I uh, make I make beats with, like, hardware synthesizers, so I have everything linked with MIDI, which is, like, a, a way to communicate with um, hardware gear, like, if you have a keyboard and a drum machine and, like, um, synthesizers, you can make your own music, basically. It's pretty cool. I, I just do it for a hobby. It's fun. Yeah, that's dope. Do you put it up um, on the web? Or you do uh, sometimes I upload stuff to Instagram, YouTube? but I just, I don't really have, like, a big, like, plan for it. I just do it just as a hobby to, yeah. like... To relax and to like see my progress, learning a new instrument. It's a lot of fun. It's like imagine a computer that's an instrument and you have to learn all the like menu and um, functions. Like kind of like if you're in a car and you don't know how the interface works with like the stereo and stuff, and you're always learning like how. Yeah. Sure, that's cool. I like that. Um, we're gonna definitely feature some of your music on here. We okay, already cool. we were already yeah. talking. Austin was already like, yeah, we'll get we'll have this guy do some. Uh, some cool things because we always have our segments we're not really segments here but we do things Uh, here's the thing you know what I would like here's a little behind the scenes for people listening at home because I'm not going to edit this shit out Uh, 
you know how I'm always on fucking YouTube trying to find, look. Yeah. You know, you've been here all the, every every time. <laughs> you know, I'm always on yeah. YouTube trying to find copyright free uh, music that suits the fucking yeah, mood of the I movie. Yeah, the licensing is it's a pain right. in the ass, man. That's all. I would love that. I would need thirty seconds of like music that fits the Goonies. You yeah. know, or music that fits whatever the fuck we're gonna watch next. Yeah. If you, I mean, or five seconds of music at the beginning of a what are you smoking? Or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah too. Yeah. If like you want to be our, if you want to be our music guy, you know, bumper we'll, music. We'll talk about it. Like I'm kind of into like synthesizers, glitchy video game sounds, and that kind of. Oh thing. great, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh video. See, we do video. That's games. all my. That would be perfect video for like a sci-fi that. movie. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's or perfect even for. We're talking video games though. Yeah, or video games. I. Uh, speaking of video games, uh, we don't See, often talk about video games, but um, man, I need to get more high. I feel. Uh, let's, you know what? Let, let's <laughs> what are we what are we let's supposed supposed circle back to, to back video to games. Just remind me of video games because I do want to talk about what okay, I've been playing recently. Playing? Okay. Uh, but yeah, let's fucking. I want to smoke this <laughs> okay. fucking space joint. You're right. so, yeah, I'm not high enough. Let's. This is where we need that bumper music for. What are you smoking? And I had and I had a <laughs> shot of. Um, Moonshine before we started. This has got to be a record for getting into what are we smoking. Only 20, <laughs> 20 minutes, minutes in. We're, we finally did it. I think we were an hour actually, in one time. That's about right. If we were doing it perfect, that's our uh, goal. Who brought this? I brought that. Hell yeah. Uh, Space Rockets. Oh, uh, God. This <laughs> Just the name. This one's called Pancakes. It's uh, infused, infused pre roll. Uh, Cannabinoids, uh, 42%. THC, 36%. Yeah. And uh, it was made last year. Apparently. Let's do it. What was in that bowl? Oh, that first one was... Uh, well, okay, so what I've been packing or will pack right. throughout the day is... Uh, it's by the 8th Brother. 8th Brother? 8th Brother. <laughs> um, Indica, 8th um, Brother Inc. Uh, Instagram and 8thBrother.com. Stardust OG 35.4% uh, or 31.5%. <laughs> Stardust. Space star. Wait, we got a theme going on. Oh, yeah, we got a space space rocks and we got uh, and, and stardust. Speaking yeah. of stardust, um, I believe that's the name of the book and movie that I used. Yeah, yeah, stardust Neil Gaiman. Oh, no, no. Uh, or Gaiman, Neil Gaiman, whatever one. Uh, have you guys ever seen Stardust? The, I do not know. No. Uh, okay. So no, it's a. I think so. It's an interesting. Very whimsical. It's a space pirate movie, right, okay. since we're on the subject of it. But like uh, space pirates, it all fits the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sort of. Yeah. yeah, Robert De Niro's a, yeah. a space pirate, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, the they're not showing a lot of cool pictures of this, but uh, it's interesting. It's a good movie. It doesn't matter. I'm not high enough. Let's smoke this fucking space rock. Uh, I want to watch Stardust now or reread it. That's the book's better than the movie, but the movie's pretty good. Okay. Let's do this. But what are we smoking? Roll music. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, space rocks. Okay. Video games. I've been playing Alan Wake 2. And uh, holy shit. One of the scariest fucking games I've ever played. It is legit difficult to play at night. I have to turn on extra lights because of how atmospherically terrifying this game is. So it's it's. are you familiar with Alan Wake? The no. series. I always get it mixed up with, uh, I think it's Heavy Rain, where you press X to Sean. Sean! Uh, Sean! <laughs> Sean! Sean! Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the best glitches of all time. But what I do know is that uh, it's, <laughs> I guess the first one came out like, a while back and there wasn't a sequel for a long time. And it's probably like connected like to some other games. I don't remember. Yes. Um, the company that made Alan Wake. Is the company that did Max Payne and Max Payne 2. Then they did Alan Wake, I think in that order. And then um, they did American Nightmare, which is like a spinoff of Alan Wake. Then they did a game called Control, or they did Quantum Break, one of the two at that time. Um, and Quantum Break uh, is another really cool one. Anyway, all of these games, and then now Alan Wake 2, all these games are connected in a in like meaningful cool ways that are being fully fleshed out and explored in Alan Wake 2. So, if you're a fan of any of those games, well, first off, play all of them in order. <laughs> if you got the time. Max Payne is cheap on Steam right now. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, just then Alan Wake 2 has payoffs. In, uh, it's one of the best games I've ever played, I think. It, they seamlessly blend live-action video with the computer graphics. So, like, you'll just be 
playing, and then all of a sudden it cuts to a video, like a movie, like the, of the actual actor who looks like Alan Lake, but you know, he just continues walking forward, and now you're watching like a movie playing out, and then it'll cut back to him in his like graphics form, and then you can go back, and it's almost. I mean, obviously you can tell, but we're getting to the point where maybe one day we won't be able to tell. And I'm looking forward to that, where it's just like, it's going to look seamless. It's just going to look lifelike, you know? Have you seen the Unreal 5 lifelike? Yeah, I've seen the, that shooter game. Mm-mm. That, uh, uh, what's it called? Body cam or something? Like, body cam footage type of game. Well, there's that one, but then there's also... Uh... Now, that, that body cam one... Unreal 5 uh, lifelike... It's a dude walking. Oh, I mean, well, okay. Through a forest. Yeah, I mean, the bamboo grove is. I mean, that's like. This just looks like fucking real life. I mean, that just looks like real life, and that's Unreal 5. Wow. Mike? Like, that's where we're at. Donate to the Patreon mm-hmm. if you want to see what we're watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, we're not it even... It is beautiful. Record. But uh, it is. It's it's called Virtual Bamboo Grove using uh, UE5 uh, 4K. But it it's honestly pretty much perfect. That is really legit. Um, this is what Unreal 5's capable of. But then I got to show you the... Um, I got to show you the... The guy, dude. Um, man walking... Oh, here, realistic person one. I mean, those are good, but I want the one where the guy's walking. Where is this? Is terrible podcasting. I'm so sorry, audience. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's just I won't be able, there. This, this one. I want this, but I don't. Okay, motherfucker. Okay, here we go. This. Now this is pretty much. I mean, that's perfect. Almost. I still say there's a bit uncanny valley. Like, it's, it's, it's like. It's crazy. But isn't that almost perfect? It's yeah. literally like a movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's. This person doesn't exist. Not a model. It's someone. Well, who no, exist, that is, right? that is absolutely a person with motion capture. They'll it's show. Mo-cap- it. They're, they're, okay. like, they're, they have a man doing okay. this. Okay. Uh, that would be the part because that's where you get so much uncanny valley when they try and actually do the movements and stuff. Yeah. It doesn't oh. work really usually, <laughs> but with the mocap combined with it, yes. It's, I mean, uh-huh. and, and you've seen it. I mean, they tried to do it in Flash, but how <laughs> didn't really work out that well. Yeah, I, I think uh, they need to start using Unreal Engine Five for right. cutscenes now. <laughs> they better than the house. But if that's but just dollars. like, but if you're looking at this, which is fucking uh, computer graphics, right? Like. God damn, look how seamless that was. This is just... What they're capable of doing is insane. So, here's my theory. We're looking at this right here. It's almost indistinguishable for me looking at you. How are we not in a simulation? How are oh, we... Oh, if you, if you take this out 50 years from now, what were they going to be? Oh, I, I, what? One, if you look at a 100 years from now even, oh, right? I would, say, I would say 100 years because that way we have implants in our brains right like i think 50 years we'll have every video game looks this good at least right but i think 100 years you could plug the chip into your brain and be able to see this shit augmented in real life i think you're underestimating how fast it changes i need you to think back it's only 40 years ago we didn't even have phones we didn't have any of this stuff 40 years ago there was no internet i mean there was but it was dial up it was insane sure the, if you look from there to today, take that advance. No, you're now right. Now do another 40 years. Double that again. Oh, <laughs> he's... <laughs> Real quick, for the people at home, uh, I just got to point this water. out. Austin ha- is, is showing Kyle how to use the water thing, and that is not your fault, Kyle. <laughs> no, we're pretty high right now. Oh, and, I, and there's a shitload of Snickers all over it. doesn't matter how high you are. Water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, dude, I'm, I would have offered... I'm sorry, I thought you had a bottle with you. Oh, it's cool, it's cool. It's just, I always uh, every single podcast this from is the, the history of all time. Never I've always ever. offered yes. drinks. I got. I was like, I got lemonade. I got sparkling water, regular water. Yeah, I we were Gatorade. an hour later, so you're kind of off your like scheduling part of that. The first hour is usually us doing that. Yeah, but isn't this insane? Like where we're at graphically, right? The problem though is that now all these stu- game studios this is just shows like what the hardware software everything is capable, capable of, of but all the studios now have to work extra hard in order to make like this into a game because it's now your expectation 
They worked on just this video, this scene of the guy walking around. They worked probably fucking tirelessly just to make it. Months. But the studios have to now replicate that for whole entire For days. those hour so, after hour after hour. What I'm saying is, uh, we could... Uh, like so, the way Alan Wake has done it, which is cool. Like I said, is they sort of show, they already have amazing graphics because it is like a next gen game and it feels next gen. Like the lighting system's amazing and it has to be because the whole game is in the dark and you have a flashlight, which is a weapon slash your source of light, uh, it, which makes the game terrifying. There's a the game opens up uh, sort of when you get to the morgue and you first meet like one of the first uh, monsters that you have to fight. You, he, like a, a naked corpse, and you see dingling and everything. A naked corpse gets up off the table, fucking murders some people around you. Uh, it's just a flickering morgue light in the dark, right? He knocks you to the ground, and then you see him walking around. You get up, you see your gun, you grab it, and you have to limp over to the light. Stand directly in the light as this guy's just circling you, fucking muttering and like looking at you, trying to find you because he can't see you in the light, and you just have to wait for the right moment to run away or then go get your gun and shoot him. That is such a tense, like, like your heart is racing, and that is just the tip of the iceberg in this game. I'm, if you're a horror fan, if you're just a, a, a suspenseful, like you like that sus, like that feeling of like unease. This is the fucking game. There's did, no shortcuts. When you started playing this time, did you go back and replay one first? Or? I had never played one, so I played one. Okay. And th- well, actually, so what it the way this all went down is I played Control, which I absolutely fucking loved. Control is a super fun game where you fly around, you have telekinesis, it's a shooter, you take over a government agency that all they do is uh, they're like X Files. They look into like mysterious shit, including what's happening with Alan Wake. Uh, so they have like a whole department dedicated to like figuring out Alan Wake's situation uh, because they made that game first. But then I played that game and I was like, this is dope. And there was an Alan Wake DLC that connects to the game. And I was like, this is sick. So then I went and bought Alan Wake and I was like, this game's awesome. I love the story. It's one of the best like narrative games I've ever played. All it is is just a cool story and you don't know what which way is up and you don't know what's happening. The spinoff is super fun because it takes place in their fictional little um, uh, Twilight Zone uh, spinoff that they have called Night Springs, which is like a little town where weird shit happens. And during the first game, you watch the TV. Like, you can watch little mini episodes of Night Springs. It's all goofy, like, Twin Peaks style, like, stuff. So the spinoff game of Alan Wake takes place in Night Springs, and it's super fun. Um, so I know. Well, this is just for a good for a good horror game. There's only one game that like really truly did scare me. Like you don't want to play it at night kind of thing. Is so, Outlast Two? Ooh, fuck yes, Mike. Have you ever seen Outlast Two? I do not. Oh, I will. Okay, even today, even though this game has been out for a while, there. This is one of them. This game is frightening, dude. Although there is Outlast Trials. That's the newest one. Yeah, I've I've, I've only played two. Me and my friend. Uh, okay, got Mike, it. you have to see just the. Uh, you are Blake. Michael. Well, that you don't need to read this. I'm gonna skip into. Okay. Okay, just see the kind of game this is. First of all, that's. <laughs> that's all you have is a camera. It's the water views because it's raining. Yeah. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, you're in the water. I see. God, look at how like how. Um, For the time, wh- and well, when was this? What year? Around. I mean, I don't know. 2010s. 2010s. Yeah. Okay. But the. Um, it feels like the the, the, the field oh, of view yeah. I, I, is, is very. It makes me, I'm already high, so I have a question. What's that? The waviness of is that in the game or is that me? Because I'm high. Uh, no, it's the game. <laughs> okay. Here, I probably picked one of the worst. <laughs> I was about to get here. Okay. This is probably a little bit better. Okay. Okay. Well, huh. I didn't want to read this stuff. Yeah. So, but basically, here, I'm gonna go to the most replayed. Most replayed. What's the section? You're like a everybody? reporter. You're traveling to Arizona in a helicopter. Your helicopter crashes. It's nighttime. You're in this weird, like almost like a Silent Hill, but hillbillies. Silent Hillbillies mm-hmm. town. <laughs> All you have is this camera. It has night vision, but your battery can run out. So then you're just in the dark, and you're basically just trying to run away and get away from all these fucking crazy people and like some weird supernatural shit happens. You kind of lose your mind. It's uh. It's like a lot of illusions in it towards the yeah, end. Yeah, dude, this is just a trippy, scary fucking game. It actually makes you feel scary. Like, what the fuck would I do? In the also, fir- an un, 
for a far, little old fucking farm town, like, village, there's a lot of fucking batteries laying around. Oh, Mike, see, did you see the bad guy? No, I did not. Okay. Oh, she oh, just, nah, okay. just kind of ran away, but uh, here, I'm going to go back just a second. I think that's why it's the most replayed. Watch. Uh, uh, jump is, scare? Well, yeah, but I don't have the sound on, so it's going to cut away from the... Right. Uh, the I went too far back. But it's going to happen. The... Um, Oh, fuck. Anyway. Just let me play. I'll watch it. All right. Uh, yeah, this game's terrifying. Uh, Alan Wake 2 is terrifying. Similar, I also though, thought... I also, similar feel when you're playing? I haven't seen gameplay. Is it similar, like... Thing? No. Okay, that's... No, this is different. Yeah, this is... Okay. Oh, yeah. It looks like, yeah, ghosty. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not gonna, I don't want to watch this in the background the whole time. <laughs> yeah. um, cool. And that was another with a musical intro by Kyle... <laughs> <laughs> Video game minute. <laughs> In the middle of what are you smoking? Yeah, is with really Austin and Andy and now. Mike sort of has an idea of what video games Mike, are. Mike's, Mike's really high. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's just like, man, we came such a long way from Frogger, dude. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is kind of what it's like for me. That's what I was saying. I don't think you realize, like, just from when I was a kid to now, man, I had, like... Hoop and I, stick? I, my <laughs> mother paid $749 for an Atari when I was a kid. Wow, your mother loved you. Yeah. And it, but it was insane. Well, she was also you know she was paying for a babysitter, but it's it's not sure. You know, she yeah, was that's a full time single mom. How so. much Atari did you play? Quite a bit. I'm I'm a pong. I'll I'll fuck you up in some pong. What year was that? We got to adjust that four hundred seventy nine dollars for inflation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, seven hundred and forty nine. Oh, fuck. I know. I yeah, that's have thousand, you ever that's... seen what an Atari twenty six hundred is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I watch Angry Video oh, Game Nerd okay. all the time. All the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Because it's I bet not, you, I bet you owned ET and loved it. The movie? No, the, no we the, didn't the, have the, the Atari. We didn't have the, movies, dude. The no, Atari the game. Atari game that no, was so famously bad that they burned all the, oh, they buried no, all the copies in a landfill. You're lucky you don't remember because everyone no, I, wishes they could forget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the, but the, yeah, that, but for me to what I see now, and then you're saying, what is it going to be in? in I bet you years. told you. I bet you. So in my mind, fifty years from now, think about that. Ain't what that difference is, and just make that difference again over fifty. Well, years. yeah, we're already. We just I saw yeah. the Unreal Engine Five. I'm like, we're there. We're almost lifelike. Uh, we're, so, we're, I think we're going to go past the Uncanny Valley. I think in fifty years, you're not going to know what's life and what's not. I think it's Ready Player One. We already have deep fakes that do that. We it's already have ready, deep. But I'm telling you, you know, you're going to get lost in Ready Player One. What People I'm, are going to. Turn into those zombie people. Do you remember the movie Ready Player One? Wait, their their whole life is just lived in. The, oh, you say zombie and like that I, they're yeah, that yeah. they're shut-ins or whatever. Right, but yeah, if you're I mean, living like, a if you're living a robust line of life virtually, you think those people were living a robust life? Uh, okay, hold on. That's this the, is I mean, no, no. Whole, this is a good yeah. point because right. here's the thing. I I ha- okay. We're now we're arguing. Are online interactions as important as as real life? And so you could say all day long because you have a family and because you have a bunch of you have friends and stuff and you have a podcast that of course physical physical relationships with people that you know in real life are way more important than online. But what about people who all they have are online connections? People who go and the only friends they have are on their Xbox. Right. That's the same as VR. If we're 50 years in the future and someone puts their VR on and they go to work and they have friends and they have a robust online social life, I don't think that, that that's a zombie or that's sad or whatever because I do think they'll put regulations in for VR. They have to if it's going to get to that point. There's going to be like a VR set's going to be like timed out or whatever. I yeah. understand what in a perfect world that would be true, but we don't live in a perfect world. In Japan, there's this is already happening. They're... They're having to pick kids up that are they're dying. They're like just living so online that they stop eating, they stop drinking. They're literally dying. Okay, but so our bodies can't handle just being that. But Japan also has a has other they have some issues when it comes to uh like societal stress. Like I think Living in Japan is a lot harder than living in America. So I think they might be on the forefront of that, like mm-hmm. trying to the escapism sure. of right. online. Yeah, I but, understand the reasoning for that. But I don't think America's the results of it. I don't think America's in danger of that. I think 
America, honestly, even 50 years from now, 100 years from now, we might have a spike of, of younger people who do that. But I don't know. Well, but then like, again, that might just be the evolution because, again, my whole point all of this is we're simulation. already in a fucking simulation. Maybe just the end cycle of the simulation it's is that we all play. just plug back in. Right, it's and just then gameplay. We plug right. back in and they start playing the next iteration of Earth. And then whatever, and whatever, and whatever. And who knows which version we're on. We're in the really crazy but one. With hear about really those deep. Taylor Swift deep fakes that are posting all over <coughs> oh. X, formerly Twitter. Yeah, well, yeah. Just a bunch Speaking of, of AI, not AI safe AI for work fucking oh, they were like AI images. I saw like Taylor. Some. I know you saw them. They were hitting, <laughs> well, no, they were hitting, obviously, a Chiefs fan. That's all my, my Twitter feed, well, X feed. That's what it is. It's, it's all Chiefs and Taylor Swift and... That's what's in my feed. So they got that algorithm, put all those photos right into everyone's feed. The, it's, and they put that in All every, the Chiefs fans saw it. It was ho- so bad. Every news art, like all the news was reporting on it. And all that's going to do is be like, all right, I got to go see those pictures now. Well, it would have, except for, I, and I'll give X yeah. credit for this and Twitter credit for this. They stopped it immediately. Oh, yeah. Within about an hour, they had it removed and they had where you couldn't even search her name at that point. Right. Now they fixed it where they can't, where the images have to be pre-approved for it. So they fixed it within a couple of hours. It X was did all, that. X did. Very impressive, actually, especially when you consider what they've done with X and how how many fewer employees they have and all the the stuff that's happened sure. there. It's very impressive how they handled that. I mean, I feel like that meme from the early two thousands, that crying guy. But leave Taylor alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, dude. She's she's. Uh, the most, she's the mega star right now. Like, of course, if she shows up to a game, they're gonna show her. Of course, like she's she just had the Eras tour right now that grossed like a billion dollars. It's one of the most successful fucking tours of all time. She's the just the hottest fucking artist right now. For and the thing is, she bridges the gap um, of of millennials and zoomers. Right. So like the young kids love her and also like people our age love Taylor, and right? And my age cuz we live viewers like one of our kids. It's weird because uh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. And it's because she do, she bridges all the ages and she does people don't realize like you were talking about her tour making all that money, but part of the end game of that and with her is she like her truck driver she gave a $100,000 bonus to each one of them. They had yeah. like 10 trucks that did the United States tour. That's dope. 6 months yeah. So they make whatever they make, and then she gave him another hundred thousand each. Yeah, Taylor Swift is dope. She hands out hundred dollar bills as tips. You but know? it's it's, like it's good to fling some shit. If you're gonna be that mega famous, like right? if you just are, oh, that, yeah. you're gonna expect some shit. Thrown. There's like I like the fake conspiracies, like the ones that are like obviously like stupid. There's right. one that's like there's an old show. It's like an old Oprah or Geraldo or sure. fucking Steve Wilco show, something like that. Where a they Carrie have, Lake. They have the leader of a like a Satanist cult, and the chick looks just like Taylor Swift. And they like put pictures of them side by side. <laughs> that she's like this leader of a Satanist cult. Oh, that's great. You know what's? Uh, even if she was the leader of a Satanist cult, people get Satanism all wrong. Uh, you know, like you think Satanism, you're thinking people are, are worshiping Satan, but mo- like Satanism doesn't but believe even in if Satan. They are. No, but e- well, even if they are, but uh, <laughs> they're just validating your beliefs. But Satanism, <laughs> the actual like, is not is not worshiping Satan. It, it doesn't believe in Satan. It's, it's more of an uh, of an atheist or an agnostic point of view where you're uh, like the like the. Um, well, that is the set. There's two groups of Satanists. You're right. There's one that's kind of making fun of religion. And there's a, the others that really are kind of crazy people to believe. There's ones that yeah. adopting well, highways. Yeah. You'll, you'll see a sign that this is adopted, yeah. but this highway was adopted by the Satanist cult. <laughs> um, that's. But but uh, yeah, I was. Uh, is that Satanist Satanistas? I think those are. Is that? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. That's. Uh, I, I believe it's, there's there's a. Well, typo Google does check if there's a typo in <laughs> Satanists. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got Oh, because I put a slash it. on it. That's yeah, what it is. I was looking for it on your computer. Satanists. There we go. <laughs> Satanism. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. So there's some that believe in. in See, uh, it's yeah. Things. Okay. It's religious, yeah. It's religious and or philosophical exactly. and or. But in modern day, the modern day Satanists, the the specific 
Uh, oh, the Satanic Temple yes, is the exact that's, that's one the of the one. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes, so right. yeah, the Satanic. If you see the Satanic Temple anywhere, yeah, they absolutely. don't worship Satan. No, <laughs> they're <laughs> making fun it's of a it. Joke. Yes. Uh, they put uh, they empathy, reason, and advo advocacy. That's the three things that they believe. In. Those are the core beliefs of the Satan, the, the Satanic Temple. They actually are one of the most. Uh, uh, like outreach, like they have the, they have like really good outreach programs. Humanists, humanist stuff, and yeah. they don't take tax money, or, or they, or they pay their taxes because right. they argue against the hypocrisy of churches not taking ta yeah, taxes. It's a what are we? Okay, hold on. Again, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a tangent. This is <laughs> really what the fuck is going you on. Save tangent. it when John is here. You know, yeah. humanitarian of the year. Uh, humanitarian of the year, John. <laughs> Right. John Conahy. Uh, well, he'll be here uh, next week, two weeks. Well, yeah, because wow. in uh, well, so well. it's it's the third of February today. In in on the sixteenth, we're gonna have that big show. I'm excited for it. Right, and this is uh, this, this is, is gonna the air last episode that'll air that they can go to live show because after this, it'll be all oh, already happened. No, I think I think it's already gonna have happened. I think this is gonna air. I think it's going to air on the, 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 on night, the, before. Day. On the, the night before of. the day yeah. of. Yeah. So if you get so. up and listen right when it comes out, run down And you can get City. to Bullet yeah. City. Yeah, come go, <laughs> come see the 16th. We're going to have a lot of fun. Right. Uh, all right, so Austin, did we do the, des the Desert Island game with you? No. I know. No, we do okay. so we should do that. Right? And since we have Kyle here... Perfect yes, opportunity. Right. All right, so this is just fun. It doesn't. It's when I say game, you can relax. There's no. Not, there's, yeah, no there's no objective. No <laughs> All it is is you're going to tell me some favorite things. Okay, so okay, we're going to trap you. Uh, oh, so again, Kyle, cue some uh, some desert island uh, desert island music. We'll right. do it later in post. Yeah. But you can give me some like tropical fucking vibe, right? Oh yeah. This is what I'm. This that, is what yeah. like if you could if you're down if you're just fucking around and you like want to make tropical vibe. That, that's yeah, cool, man. and then do, 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 like just yeah, yeah just have some background music. Yeah, okay. Melody, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna put you, you. You you both are trapped on your own islands, okay? Um, but just because you guys came together, you get a coconut. With a re you get a coconut phone with a really 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 long string. It's it, that's it. Just between the two of you, you can communicate if you want. Fair. Okay. Oh shit. What are you doing? Oh. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. So you're both trapped on your own island. Uh, you have a you have a house. You have a big uh, a huge big screen TV. It's fucking dope. Uh, you have a fridge that'll keep. Uh, well, we'll get there. Uh, and you have a bookshelf. Okay. You can bring a DVD, a Blu-ray, like a like a 4K, you know, super Blu-ray. What are you gonna bring? Any DVD? It has to be a movie or a show, or it just could, a movie. Well, we're gonna get into shows, so I would say movie. movie. But if you, I guess if you like, you know. But it's but is it is it the same rules we played with before? So if it's a movie series, nope. No, I just hold on. Movie? It's just whatever they answer. Okay. I guess the, the Star Wars. I'd bring Star Wars. Which one? Revenge of the Sith. Okay, you had a very specific one in mind. Okay. Uh, now, I'm feeling... Mike gave away the game a little bit, but I'm feeling generous. I think I'll give you Attack of the Clones as well. Okay. Now, you can keep that one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I'm if gonna you give said you episode one. I would have been like, okay, cool. I'm gonna give no. I'm gonna give you the uh, the last Jedi. I'll just kill myself. I'll make myself <laughs> that coconut string. I'll be like, later, buddy, have fun on your island. I'll hang myself with the coconut string. Okay, no, fuck it. I'll give you the I'll give you the prequel trilogy. All right. Because uh, at least then you could have the the middle movie to bridge it if you really want. Um, Kyle, what are you gonna bring? Man, the whole time I was just thinking about it. And I still haven't made a decision. Oh. You're honest. I like it. Uh, if you need inspiration about comic book movies or anything, you can look around my apartment. Uh, <laughs> just, just anywhere you look, it's like, oh, yeah. Christopher Nolan did make The Dark Knight. Okay. We got some dead air, Kyle. Come on. Yeah. You got to pick a movie. I mean, here's the thing. I know now, what's this the is... last movie you saw? Well, no. Well, this is, this is going to be cemented on podcasts forever, and all your friends and family will... Know what you bring to a deserted island, so it is important. But knowing that, no pressure. Just give something. 
Well, I just can't think of one right now. Okay. We'll come back to movies. It might get easier once you think of something else. Next one is you could bring a boxed set of a TV show. This is easier. Like, what's the one thing you'd binge forever? Well, it's actually not that easy because for me, it's like already. Oh, okay. It's already a toss up between yeah. like Office, right. Simpsons, yeah. fucking South Park. Like. Well, especially when you get, yeah, you want more episodes. It's the whole thing. So the, I, I would bring Entourage. Oh, God, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. It has its fair share of comedy, a little bit of action, drama. And it could also double as porn sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, and because of that, I'm going to give you the movie. Sweet. I like the movie. The movie's good. Uh, Entourage. Again, uh, underrated classic. What a great show. If Ari you haven't Gold. seen it. Oh, the show, yeah. Ari Gold is worth seen. it alone. Kyle, what about you? TV show? You got him way too high. Kyle's <laughs> yeah. uh, very high. It's okay. Yeah. We'll come back. Uh, maybe you'll think of something. Uh, all right. Now, the next thing is a book. What book would you want to bring? Fuck. Uh, and why is it the Holy Bible? No. I'm not the Dalai Lama, dude. Oh, yeah. Dalai <laughs> yeah, Lama, wrong dude. Wrong guy. Bring my you favorite can... Christmas movie. Die hard. <laughs> you can uh, listen to that rant on our YouTube. Yeah. You know, Whatever. I'd probably get, bring, I, oh, I'd bring Charles Bukowski's Ham on Rye. Charles Bukowski's Ham on wow, Rye. Wow, I am. Not to... <laughs> All right, I'm going to look that up yeah. later. Really, really good writer. Uh, fucking poet. Oh, he's a poet also. Okay. Is it? Is this just a poem or is this a... It's a semi-autobi- semi-autobiographical yeah. novel. So it's a not, but he's a... Po- wow. Yeah, it's about him growing up. Uh, he died like a few days before I was born. Does he write poetically? His his in his novel that when you read, is it a poetic? Uh, poetic it's mostly style? stories. It's mostly just like stories. Like okay. the Ham on Rise about him growing up as a kid. Uh, there's he does another one factotum about when he worked at the factory. There's one post office when he was worked at the post office. These are poems he wrote. No, this, these, these are, are all stories. stories. There's poems there's in it. Story. Okay. There's poems in them. He has like he has a bunch of really good works. They actually made the movie after him called Barfly, which is a. Uh, I mean, if it ends up on Tubi, I'm definitely suggesting it. Sure. Because I've never seen it. I've heard of Charles Bukowski. I've just, I've never read any of his stuff. Really good writing, really good storytelling. It's funny, like, where it has to be. It's, like, crazy in other parts. Like, it's it's really real. Uh, he's a big drinker. Uh, me and Kyle, actually, were super into his books. Uh, when I went to visit him in California, we actually went to where his grave is. Oh, shit. We pull up to the cemetery, and... Uh, I was like, hey, can you help us? We're trying to find a specific grave. And he's like, Charles Bukowski's grave. And we're like, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> he drew us a little map. He knew exactly where it was. He's like, they're either here to see Michael Jackson or Charles Bukowski. Like, yep. uh, like uh, or whatever. Like, there's two celebrities, and he looked at you guys. He's like, these are the Bukowski boys right here. Uh, would you bring in a Bukowski book? Um, yeah, I like Factotum because it's pretty funny. It's like classic. And you work at a factory. Yeah, mm-hmm. double meaning. <laughs> Uh, okay. Mine's all would, would probably be like a, a Robert McCammon book because Kyle, sorry. Kyle uh, still has not picked a movie or a show, so he just gets that book. Yeah, I'm, get the no, no, because he forego movies and TV. I guess I just you're just gonna have a big screen TV. Oh, what you didn't? I just don't keep up with everything. Oh. Like I got, um, I don't know. <laughs> sure, we got a. I feel like you're gonna have a big screen TV in your in your desert island. Uh, house that's going to be useless <laughs> this is going to be a mirror or something you look at <laughs> like a black mirror but i'll give you all of charles bukowski's books though Wait, but you said it's a tv on an island <laughs> yeah but i'm on the island so it's like I'm it's powered be, by I'm coconuts gonna, i wouldn't be watching the tv because i'd be on the island you know what i'm saying oh so you won't even be inside watching tv i don't want to watch tv because i'm on the island chilling you know like I oh it. man you're gonna the whole time chilling fine we're <laughs> di- we're doing a different game for you then fine oh, shit. all right you get all of charles bukowski's books to read on the fucking beach you sir do not get a big screen tv instead i'm really building up the backyard you're getting a like a cabana dock fucking all the like chillest layout spots hammocks all the everything right oh, yeah. you're gonna have a bar with unlimited fucking uh, what? Okay, what cocktail are we gonna do? That's unlimited. Um, just, 
Just shots of vodka, unlimited shots of vodka. So you're just gonna go vodka, and then you want like a soda chaser, or what do you want? No chasers, unless it's like a just like a, a sprite or something. Okay, we'll give you free sprite. I mean, you yeah. just just in case. I mean, God, don't <laughs> just be a fucking guy. Just just you just sit on the beach, just vodka shots the whole time. Okay, great, if perfect. You subbed out movies and uh, TV shows for a game. I know exactly what game it would be. He gets one game, he gets to play. Oh, GTA Four. Oh yeah, that game's pretty 100%. awesome. And you get online <laughs> functionality. It wouldn't be GTA Five. Well, the thing <laughs> is, like, uh, I'm not like a big movie person, but with games, like, I look at the story as like a movie when I'm playing the game, and like, that's how I can play a game that um, just. I just think I want to play something that's like a movie when I'm playing it. Fuck yeah, dude! That's like the Alan Wake game I'm playing right now. It yeah. is so. In your like, it is such a narrative. Uh, that's all I play are on are, are narrative single player games. That's all I play. Like I'm not a big online game other than Dead by Daylight, which is uh, sure. um, uh, one of my absolute favorite. It's the only live service game I like. Um, it's have you heard of Dead by Daylight, the one where you play as a you play as like a, a let's just say like a camp counselor type of like survivor, and there's a Jason style killer chasing you down yeah. right like and you're trying to escape by like powering up generators as he's just going around trying to kill you all but take that and times it by like they have jason freddy krueger the ghost face killer from scream they have uh the grudge girl the girl from grudge she comes out of fucking tvs and shit and comes after you uh it's a super intense kind of it's not super scary anymore because once you've played it enough and you understand the loop and you understand like uh, like what the game is, it gets less scary. But then at the same time, you play Michael Myers and you're just working on your generator and you don't hear anything because he doesn't have that heartbeat like all the other killers. He's just a silent guy and he just stares at you. And when he stares at you, he builds up a meter. And when he builds up the meter enough, he can just one hit you and just kill you. Yeah. So if you're just working on a generator. Like I've been here for a minute and you turn around and you just see Mike Myers just staring at you. Ghostface the same way except he can lean from trees. It's that's creepy. Uh, if they could pull it off, it's fun. I like how I like I like the sound of that. It's a fun game. I would if you jumped on some Dead by Daylight. I have it on PlayStation, uh, uh, but it's crossplay because I have a PS Five too. I think it's crossplay. Oh well, then fuck it. Yeah, I think it's a free game. I don't know if it's free, but you'd probably want to buy the pack of like whatever Survivor you'd want to play as. Okay. They just came out with Alan Wake as a skin. Uh, which is kind of cool. So I might want to actually get back into it. Oh, they just released Alien from, uh, like, Aliens nice. as a killer. Uh, oh, no, fuck. They just released Chucky as a killer. And I was like, how are they going to do Chucky? And it's pretty cool. Uh, it's the only killer where you... you so uh, the, what makes this game interesting is when you're a survivor, it's four of you. And you're working together on a team to escape the, the killer. You can't hurt him, but he can kill you, right? Uh, they uh, um, what was I gonna say? You're playing from a third person perspective, right? So you can like look all around you as you're like working on the generator or whatever. The killer is a first person shooter perspective, uh, so he has a completely different point of view as he's playing, right? It's pretty cool. Anyway, fuck video game minute over. Roll the music. Uh, oh wait, no, no. Uh, that, uh, we're finishing this up. The last one would be. Uh, I think the most important one. If you had a Star Trek replicator that you could punch the button and get a meal every single time you press it, what's the meal? And before you answer, it does not have to be a what you could order at a restaurant, what they would put together as a meal. So, like, if you want spaghetti and meatballs as your main course, but instead of having garlic bread and a salad, which they would give you at, like, uh, you could put mashed potatoes and like i don't know uh beef satay from a thai restaurant if that's what you want so like be creative like it doesn't have to be a cohesive dish from anyone's point of view but your own but don't get crazy you can't have like unlimited sides you know like it has to okay. be a, it has to be like something that would fit in a replicator what would you pick um so it'd be a ribeye steak all right side of asparagus and mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay. Very Specifically from where? This is your dream oh. thing. Is it from Mesa Grill, Bobby Flay's restaurant? Is it from uh, a homemade, your mom? I'll just go Ruth 
Uh, my mom. My mom makes it. I'll just do it. Okay. It has to be from a place, like a franchise. No, it could be your mom's. My mine yeah, is sure. my mom's spaghetti is absolutely my, my main asparagus, dish. Asparagus, steak, and some mashed potatoes. Hell yeah! And what what about dessert? Ooh, uh, hmm. Just a, a fucking New York cheesecake. Oh hell yeah! Cherry on top, chocolate. No cherries, just the drizzle. Just a drizzle of cherry. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. I see it in my mind. Delicious, Kyle. Man, I'm gonna think about it. I'm just thinking of, like triple cheeseburgers. Fuck yeah! <laughs> From where? I don't even know. Just as long as it's a triple cheeseburger and it's fucking good, and yeah. they don't fuck up my like my condiments or whatever. Like, well, they won't because you get it's your it's your dream it's your dream food. <laughs> dream food. What's well, your dream? It's your dream triple cheeseburger. What condiments? Well, what you happens want when it? something in the dream and they do it wrong? Like, <laughs> oh, shit, no, you're not dreaming it. It's you're telling me right now. I'm gonna make it perfect because I'm the god of this little universe that we're creating. <laughs> Yeah. But okay, you're going to get a perfect, yeah. non-fucked-up condiment triple cheeseburger. Do you want the sesame bun? Oh, yeah, the bun's good. Do you want it toasted? Well, actually, I usually like to get, like, uh, like sourdough would be good. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Make some crazy, like, unique burger. Dude, man, I want a burger after this is done. Now that you've said it. Like, that really... You ever go to, like, the... I go to this place, it's got a, a B, and it's... And it's... it's but it's they make the burgers exactly the way I like them. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's that greasy, uh, like pops diner vibe, and they always put the Thousand Island on it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know what kind of burger? They're always a little bit bigger than your average burger. I like that. I don't know what it is. I think it's cooking a burger on a grill that gets used for short order cooking all day long. You know, and it picks up those extra like like In and Out does it. Almost exactly the way that I like, but I think Jimmy's down here just does it like just greasy enough. I'll risk the food poisoning. Anyway, I'm hungry. Yeah, I just, <laughs> just hungry. I realized how hungry I was, yeah. and then I just noticed you guys are both wearing the same shirt. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. It's got yeah, the the rice 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 yeah, there's a handful of these in the world. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have any by the time. I haven't even ordered any, so we're not gonna have any by the time the 16th happens. <laughs> I don't even pretend that that was an option. I'll use this opportunity to plug our heat show at the Heat Hotel in Lake Havasu City, March 3rd? Wait, I think it's the 2nd. March 2nd, it's a Saturday, 8 p.m. After the show, we're all going to be hanging out at the Glitch, so come see us, Glitch Barcadian. Fuck yeah. Um, Or fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. (laughs) And that's in Lake Havasu? Yes, sir. Heat Hotel. So if you're looking for a reason to get out to Lake Havasu, weather's getting really nice right now, this would be the time, you know, make your way out there. We'll hang out at the Heat Hotel. You can even probably book a room at the Heat Hotel. It's an actual hotel, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, they don't just call it that, because I've only been to the bar. <laughs> yeah, I went there uh, when Chris Angel did a trick on the London Bridge. Oh, shit, what did he do? He, like, submerged himself in a cage under the water, and then he, like, appeared on the roof of a hotel, an adjacent hotel. How do you think he did it? He's body double for sure. 100% okay. body double. I just watched the King of the Hill episode where, and this might be one of my favorites, uh, It's <laughs> they go to a magic show and they watch uh, some chick disappear or whatever. And uh, Hank's like, he's figuring out, he's trying to figure out how all the tricks are done. And then Peggy gets chosen. He goes back and Peggy, or I think Peggy gets chosen. And disappears and won't tell Hank how the trick is done. She's like, I made a promise. I won't tell you. And it's driving him fucking insane. <laughs> Their marriage is on the brink in this episode. I've never seen them closer to like actual hating each other than in this in this episode. And so he eventually uh, figures it out. Like I think she, she tells him or whatever. And their marriage is fixed. Thank God. But at the very end... Bobby, uh, during the credits, he comes out in that black mask thing. Because do you remember one of the most... I think this was one of the most viral, before viral was a thing, moments. Was, do you remember that guy in the black mask that came out on like Fox or ABC or one of those channels? Where he's like, tonight, black mask is going to reveal how tricks are done from your from all the famous magicians. Do you remember that? Like, it was a big reveal. And he came out, and he's like... I'm going to make this elephant disappear. And he does. And then he shows everybody. He's like, wait till the end of the episode. I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. 
Does that not ring a bell? Something. Uh, some, the elephant uh, rings a let's bell. Let's see. Black. Brought to you by bell ringers. <laughs> Brought to you by bell ringer. Black mask guy. Uh, you're Rings supposed to be. You're supposed to be my my yeah. laptop guy. Yeah, I know. You're I supposed know. to be just typing the things I'm. I'm. My free of. I'm. You know. Stream yes. of consciousness. Yeah, saying. Jamie. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who's uh, Jamie? I thought I was gonna be able to do that. I can't. He's can't the, maintain focus when I'm high enough to do this. I so understand. Pull that up, <laughs> pull that up Jamie guy on YouTube. Or Masked or magician secrets revealed. Here's a. Oh, this is a funnier die. That's not what I. Don't put the actual. <laughs> I want the mast. Uh, Val Van Val Valentino, I guess his name is. Let's do that. Let's do Val Valentino, uh, the mast magician. Here, I'll just show you the, the first part. What is this? Okay, we're not watching another podcast on this podcast. Uh, okay, well, here we go. Tonight, the moment you've been waiting for, is we reveal the biggest secret of all. The true identity of the masked magician. Oh shit. Good evening. I'm Mitch Pelleggi. They changed the color. Ever since we started giving away secrets, magician. Oh, we can't. For probably copyright reasons, I'll do that. And why did he do it? <laughs> we'll give it a long fox on our You're ass. about to find out. For the first time, you will actually see our magician's face. And hear him. Magic's biggest secrets. <sighs> Jeez, this is. Okay. The ropes are wrapped around his body and tied. Beneath his waist. Oh god, this is just let's get high and watch a YouTube episode of fucking Fried Rice Podcast. <laughs> a lot of dead air, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're I hope all of anyone listening was just on chill mode today. I think this is one of our less hectic episodes for it's whatever that's nice worth. And calm after the last one we had. But yeah, we so ladies about, yeah. This is the well, first time we've been on straight indica today again and this we've been doing a not in the couch. This one's got me kind of in the couch today. <laughs> Yeah, I just I just lit the space joint again. So anyway, he just reveals how shit's done. Oh shit, that was cool. You see that? They dropped a th uh, a fucking uh, huge flaming thing onto a car. That's sick. Is he in that? Oh no, you can see him struggling. Well, he's dead. You, uh, do you have you, how much Mister Beast do you watch? Well, that's a. It's a, just a question because you're on. You have to be on YouTube. No, it's not really because you were on YouTube. And I, I don't I really watch a lot of Mr. Beast. Just start watching it recently. Is why I, I watch. That. I've seen enough Mr. Beast to know what's up, and I and I've yeah. I've bought his chocolate bars to, and I've played the game that you can play by scanning the barcode on the back of his chocolate bars. So whatever that. I've not me. seen a single frame of that guy's show. I just know of him. His Squid Game is really cool. Uh, well, Mr. Beast is great. Yeah, was it just, I just got to do it with the kids. It, it's coming up because we, with the movie we watched, I watched with the kids, and so we were talking about. Yeah, let's get into the movie, because that was what kind of where I was going with. That. Don't <laughs> tell me what to do, Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying not to tell you what to do by telling you what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, the movie roll some Kyle Martin <laughs> exclusive. This is the movie. I'm thinking grand, like what you would hear right before the actual movie starts in a movie theater. You know, like, they're taking him on that roller coaster or Nicole Kidman just finished her speech and now it's doing the, like, welcome to AMC. You know, like, all that shit? Yeah. One of those. All Ten right. seconds or whatever. I don't need... Twenty seconds. Who cares? Whatever you want. Whatever you're feeling. Roll that now. I hope we get all this before I edit this episode. That'd be so much fun <laughs> if we could actually throw in the music when, when it happens. So roll that and then... uh You want to... Uh, yeah, I'll take some. Oh more. shit! Fuck yeah! Um, high off his ass, but he's taking more. Yeah. I love it. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna send you the clip and email. He's gonna, oh, I finally remember what movie and TV shows I wanted for the island. <laughs> uh, hey, we're talking about the Goonies today. Nineteen eighty-five. We're, Mike's the only one alive when this movie came out. Is that true? Is that right? I am the only one here who was alive when this movie came out, and and I didn't see it. This is, I always I just saw it for the first time last night. Shit. Wait for the first time. First time. No, that how is that no. possible? I, I don't know how it's possible. Honestly, now that I've watched it, because I felt like in watching the movie I'd seen it before, but there, we'll get into that later. Why that is, but it's maybe you'd seen it. No, I had not seen it. It's been around for forty years. Yeah, but maybe. I was twenty-one when it came out. 
That's I, was not, physically that can't be possible because you're 90. <laughs> okay. You must I was have been 21 when the Goonies 60. came out, so I was I hit right in between. My kids weren't born until four years later, and back then there wasn't HBO and all the stuff that stuff comes on, so we never saw it. We didn't have kids the right age Got at it. the time it came out. Well, I would argue that it's not necessarily a kids' movie. I was movie. in the bar, but I was in the bars. I was watching Star Wars. I wasn't. Yeah, you were getting you know, fucked was, up. Yeah. You didn't care about. I, you know, you could just pass it to me, and I could pass it back. Like what we, <laughs> like I'm high. What I'm we've been doing, <laughs> yes. literally this whole time without a single yes. hiccup, Mike. <laughs> and yet you want to. The one thing that can move. fuck up our recording is somebody <laughs> getting up and moving, and you want to cross over. Uh, Christopher Columbus wrote this. <laughs> yeah, directed by Richard Donner, who uh, also did. Oh, dude, this is crazy. Superman. I love Richard Donner. Superman. Oh wait, then who, I'm also thinking of Chris. I'm thinking of Chris Columbus that I like because he did the Harry Potters. He did. Um, I think just the Harry Potters I like. Yeah. He did the light. Oh, he executive produced the Lighthouse. Lots of producers. God, why stop starting me on producer? <laughs> you just, want just show me what I'm here tonight. for. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, he did Pixels. the. Pixels. A movie I did just see. I liked Pixels for it whatever okay it is. For what it was. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, Harry Bicentennial Potter. Man, oh, yeah. all day long. Bicentennial Man. Robin Williams as a as a robot trying to become human. Two Harry Potters. I have Mrs. Doubtfire. No, I gotta stop. <laughs> I have okay. to stop. He directed Home Alone too, which uh, I I saw. Uh, this is not political, but I I watched a like a MAGA guy at a at a Trump rally. And he, the reporter's just like, what's your favorite movie? And the guy always says, like, Home Alone 2. It's like, why? Huh. You know why. It's just like, uh, it's like, why'd you bring it? I'm hoping Trump signs it. Yeah, so he did both Home Alones. Yeah, it's, it's very good. But Okay. And then Spielberg. Well, he wrote it. Know. Yeah. Well, he didn't uh, really even write it. Spielberg was like the producer and behind the scenes, really. It wasn't... He says writing. He had a lot to do with it. But he's, he's only... But I'm saying he's with... He's credited. Yeah, he's credited, but it's, it was his idea. So let's get let's get into this. Writing. But he did do a lot of on-the-fly writing. Okay. Yeah, yeah he's probably yeah, there being like, let's do this, fly, let's right? do this. Yeah. Let's give Sean Astin a really bad speech <laughs> right. for, uh, for the Goonies <laughs> Never Die moment. I will say that that speech was not great. Oh, um, yeah. I okay. it every time. Yeah. Uh, okay. This movie, I've, I, I probably hadn't seen it in 20 years, 15, 20 years, right? It's not something I, I watch on a regular basis. Yeah. And, that, and I'm okay with that. Now that I've seen it again, I'm like, I could probably wait another 10 years, 15 years before watching it. Not that it's bad by any means, but it's just, I don't think it's as great as everyone Really? Claims it to be. I think it's get for me. It's giving that like ET vibes, where it's just like, where it's just like for the time. E. This was probably the yeah. shit. But the further we get away from it, the more flaws you can see. I all I wrote down were, were flaws, and I. Um, well, it's crazy we reversed in this then because I'm the exact opposite. I am so, I, but I'm seeing I'm seeing it through a child's eyes. I guess it's so different. It's like you're saying you don't you don't need it anymore as an adult. But I saw it. I, I became a twelve-year-old or thirteen-year-old again, because a part of it is also time frame because it goes back to a time that I was that age, and so it feels right to me. Okay. Well, and, let me. Yeah. Okay. So here's things I like. For I, I absolutely love period pieces. Mm -hmm. This is a period piece of 1985. Right. If you think about but things it, it like was, that now. Right, yeah. Uh, so I love movies that take place pre-cell phone. I feel like. It opens up. I believe things like I believe that a bunch of kids no, just got did. lost. No, but what I'm saying is, I believe that like their parents couldn't find them. No way to get a hold of them. They weren't even looking for them to at first. Is the thing. That's what I'm saying. No, wait. So it's a different that, time. That's not true. Obviously, the parents were looking for them. The the they showed up like. They all showed up in a van at the end, looking for them, and it was one eventually, day later. But not a, yeah, but eventually, but not in an hour or two like today's parents. That's what we're saying. Oh, okay. I'm but, saying that you go out in the afternoon, and you didn't come back till dark. It's just the way it was. You just left. Sure, well, it's a different time. But what I'm yeah. saying, they still looked for them after probably 8 p.m. Oh, when sure. they all should have been Absolutely. home. Absolutely, absolutely. But not in the beginning. They were already gone by then. I'm just saying it was so normal to me. In, okay, in, what's what's your thing? Oh, it goes on and on. It's it's. I watched it with my grandchildren, okay. so it was 
it was my first time seeing it. My grandson had seen it once before, and my granddaughter had never seen it. And it was so great watching it from their eyes and within and then me seeing it for the first time. I, it's probably now my favorite family movie or kids movie. Um, now, not my favorite movie, no, but as far as something you can sit down with your family and watch and have a blast, and it's funny, but there are, and I see some of the things that you see as problems, I see them as nostalgia, so it's like Easter eggs. Oh, wait, I'm going to get into mine. Yeah, but you're just calling those problems, so some of what no, you were talking about. mine are just funny observations. Ago. Yeah. No problems, whatever. This movie's, this movie's great. It, it's it's a, stuffed with that, though. It's like, like, to me, this is, Steven Spielberg was sitting there on the set, and he went, okay, what's every idea I've already done and every idea I'm going to have in the future, and I'm going to take like two minutes of each of those ideas and put them all in this fucking movie. Yeah. It's <laughs> got Indiana it Jones vibes. It's, or is that George Lucas? No, that's no, him. that's Spielberg, Spielberg, right? Both of them. But Indiana Jones. Do you remember the ball rolling down the hall in this? Oh, there's no, literally no. a shot for shot. I'm going to get into that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then there's, but there's like four or five of those different movies. E.T., the basket ride. The basket ride of E.T., is recreated in this movie when? when they're all on their bikes and he jumps on the little bike with the little basket in front and they show him running. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's when, exactly Did he come out after that? And then when they come in, and I don't remember the exact dates, but it's what I said. It's, some of it was before, some of it was after, but he reused the ideas or whatever. Because that shot for shot when they ride their bikes off into the into the woods is exactly the shot from E.T. So a lot of the shots are the same. That's what I'm saying. The way they're set up and the setups, because a lot of it's from after. his life. Chunk's throw-up thing was something he did as a kid. Spielberg. Did what? That prank. Oh, he that, talking about it? Yeah. Like like that yeah, he did that he felt guilty prank, about it? Yes. Spielberg actually did that prank as a kid. That's where that came from. What a dick. Yeah. You should feel <laughs> It was that. a dick thing to do. But the whole movie's full of that. That's what I'm saying. The whole movie's like Steven Spielberg was on set just throwing shit. Constantly. And they were playing. They were... They went on the... Uh, the water slide. Yeah. In there. Uh, that was a real working water slide. They go after the, after the end of the day, they were all in there playing on the water slide every day. Yeah. It was like, uh, okay. the whole thing is is just, has that feel to it, is yeah. what I'm saying. It's a great so that's my, it's, vibe. I, you watch this movie and you're like, oh God, I feel good when I watch I haven't smiled this much at a movie in forever. What the fuck is that at the bottom of the screen right there? What does that say, guys? I want to hold that? your hand? The Below that. Slipstream? What the fuck is that? Yeah. That's, that's not the same slipstream. There's no. Three oh, that's slipstreams short story. Now? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that means we picked the worst out of three. We picked the worst one. Wow. Out of three. There's three now. We still picked the but wrong also, one. Yeah, Spielberg, would you, I mean, it's just. Short story about a group of people addicted to drug fans of rock group slipstream. Wow, that's not yeah. even a well put together sentence st- structure for this. Maybe the was budget worse. was five thousand dollars. He needed money to finish the film. He was unable to raise the money, and it went unfinished. Okay, I watched a good one minute version of this movie that showed what it could have been like. It's pretty much just people bike racing. Nothing special. Would have been a good TV movie. Oh wow! All right. Still okay. Than slipstream. So all right, yeah. All right, let's get back to good. There's so, just bit after bit. It's like two, there's a ton of like two minute bits throughout this or five minute bits, but they're it's just each. You just take each one and you look at it. You go, wow, that's Indiana Jones. Wow. Well, the hat is from Indiana Jones. Would you describe it's not, it? It's just insane how much is in this movie would from you, my childhood. Would so. you describe it or as like a movie version of that whole contraption to open the door in the beginning? Like the whole movie is just put together like little pieces that make this whole movie happen? Kind like Rube of, Goldberg. Yeah, of, it's kind of the Rube of Goldberg. Steven Spielberg's ideas. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's thrown out like, into a bunch of kids kissing each other. <laughs> it's, well, there's, yeah. No, not just well. There's a lot of it. Um, I'm going to point that a lot of kissing. It's not a lot, bruh. Not only it's once again that's the Taylor Swift effect. There's not a lot. Let me let me just probably one minute of screen time. Let me get into my shit real quick. So um, real quick, Uh, so right before oh I showed you guys the weird snapping thing that he Uh does, which you which Mike seems to love. But if you go to 16 minutes and 45 seconds into this movie, Josh Brolin, for no reason, because well, there's like a fly buzzing in front of his face, he sort of snaps at it, trying to catch it. I don't know if he does. It doesn't look like he does, because he sort of follows it off. They kept that. They kept that well, in the fucking thing, because... Who, do you reset your life if something like that happens in your life? Oh, do you I go, reset? Oh, i got to back up 10 minutes and redo it. 
No, no but if, you just well, do it and go on. I don't know. Maybe if it's I had a maybe if I had a multi million dollar movie, I would redo it. So, but you do understand a lot of my films, this movie is those little mistakes that are in real life are in this movie. So it's like it's more real feeling. You can really sure. lose yourself. You in can it. love all the little the little mistakes. I do too. Here's some more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sean Astin and Josh Brolin, I think they're actually great brothers because they have a lot of physical touch that's not always violent. There's like yeah. three scenes where Sean Astin is sitting on Josh Brolin's lap, which I think yeah. is uh is yeah. Um Thanos. Yeah, Thanos yeah, and Thanos Cable. Is lap, yeah. I also put it like what's with everybody miss saying stuff and then Josh Brolin correcting them? <laughs> they that never pays off. It's just he no. they him and Sean Astin and his mom, they both have this this thing of like where they miss say stuff. Like Sean Astin a lot more than his mom, but his mom says it too. Uh, and then Josh Brolin is there every single time to correct them on how to say stuff. That's it. It's then they the, go downstairs, and then that's it. It's the reverse of the octopus. I don't know what the hell that means. Okay, well at the end of the movie, they talk about an octopus. The, the big fight with the octopus they talk about at, in the scene at the end of the movie with the families. It never happened because it was cut out of the movie earlier. Yeah. So it's just another one of those little mistakes where they he... mentioned it, but it never happened. I don't remember an octopus Yeah, it's talk. in there. What? When? In the end when the family's there. What part? Uh, hang on, who I says tell it? you exactly who said it. Hang on, I have it written down. Uh... <laughs> Let me find it, though, because I have a lot written down on this movie. As it's far insane. As, as far as little mistakes, there's one that always bothered me every time. And it's when they uh, the brothers like has that stretchy fucking workout thing. Yeah. Like, How far can you stretch that? And then they tie him up behind the chair. As they're tying it, you hear Chunk. It's like it's like a DJ skip. He's like, I, I, got, I got it. I got it. Like You, you hear that like, skip. It always fucking bugged me because they went back and like left that in there. Or they were just... It's like they had a... What's that where you press the button and it makes the noise on the fucking sound equipment, Kyle? Just where you can just press it over again. Like, da 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 It sounds like, like someone a just... loop? Yeah, like they, someone just looped it like three times. I got it. Oh, you that's... Hear, like, I, I got I got it. Yeah, that's real charming. Really really puts you in the mood for... It. I'm just saying. that I, I don't know. Okay. They're fucking around with the pipes once they go underneath there. And they start pulling on all the pipes, which is... Very silly and totally not how the world works, but uh, they somehow, when either when Sloth goes in and pushes the thing up or when they're fucking around with it the first time, it cuts to a guy in a red tracksuit who then gets launched off the toilet, lands directly in front of the camera, and screams, Daddy. And that's never resolved or mentioned before. I thought. Is that the dude that runs him off the road with his, like, tries to murder, like, the attempted homicide high school kid who attempted to murder Josh Brolin by grabbing his arm? And right. Which, Josh Brolin, what are you working out for if you can't take a dude's hand off of your hand? Like, uh, they, you were, they were both just, it was one hand on top of his, it wasn't double handing it or whatever. Like, he could have slid underneath... I'm just saying. He's the most useless lunk. A lunk? Is that is that what the term is? Like what they did to Adam yes. Warlock in the movie? In the Guardians movie? Oh. Made him just a big, dumb idiot. Yeah, but I like... He's strong. He's like <laughs> supposed to be super cool. This guy is... Uh, Josh Brolin's character is another... He gets subdued by children, and a guy who's driving a car can put his hand out, and he can't lift yeah. his hand up. And yeah. the octopus is data telling his dad. Oh, we had a big octopus fight. That's what, at the end of the movie, when now all the families are getting together... At the reunion scene. Do they put that in Chinese? No, it's in American. Uh, or English. I'm going to well, really more that. American. Yeah, American. Yeah, you have to rewatch the, the Texas okay. just came out. The, like. There's a whole scene. You can go on the DVD. There's a scene. The scene is on the DVD in the deleted scenes. About okay. The octopus. It exists. Okay. Yeah. It's, you can actually look up deleted octopus scene on yeah, we'll look, YouTube, probably. Well, I'll look that up. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Cool. Then, I, then the octopus. Yeah. So, but that. So I said those mistakes are there, but they don't really. It's just converse. Like that's a little conversational throwaway that somebody picked out and figured out, and they ended with it, put it together with the deleted scene. But the point is, it's in the movie. So yeah. the things that are flaws are kind of like they're cut flaws because they had to cut out this or that. So there probably was a payoff to his attitude. It's just. Well, it's not in there. It, it's so because it it's sucks. all these five minute things put together. That's sure. What I'm well, what saying. I'm saying it's it not in there, there so it kind of right. sucks. Like, that whole daddy thing, I was like, oh, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, I guess funny? 
but stupid. I, and I, I don't understand why it was I in there. I feel like the original cut of this movie was probably like four hours long. Let's get the Donner cut. What's <laughs> yeah. going on? Let's get That's the Spielberg cut. That's a little tough cut. to do now. No, give them $10 million and have them recut some stuff. They can use AI to make the kids. It's easy. Are they going to use AI to make Donner? Yeah. Okay. You know, we need AI Richard Donner to make remake Who cares? The movie. AI can do anything. Because Richard Donner is no longer with us, so that's yeah, not, I, I know. Yeah, so we can't AI. That's why there's no two. There was gonna be a two. There was gonna be a two. Yeah. As I was just died. thinking. Yeah, no, he died, and they couldn't. Do well, this, why, and I they will not know because they're a fan. They, they, there's interviews with them. They will not do it. They, they still get together. They still call themselves the Goonies. They're like. It's weird. And Corey, it's like, Corey Feldman's on some weird shit right yeah. now, too. Yeah. I mean, I don't want a sequel now with the original crew. I would have wanted right. a sequel then with the original crew. Like 1980, 80, 1990 or 1987 or whatever, I would have liked a sequel. I, who, I, well, except for you you said you don't, you've got all these problems with the movie. I, none what? of these are problems. It's all great. Except the Goonies never say, die, speech, sucks, balls. It's poorly constructed. It's, he repeats it's himself so, once a few again, times. It's another cutout. Yeah, there's a whole... There's actually a whole, I have it, I have the whole, and I'll let you do it. <laughs> no, I don't want to read the whole speech. Okay. Because they have, uh, it's part of the oath problem. When they cut the oath down, they had to take out in other places. Well, so there was what, like a it, long oath that was like two paragraphs long. Well, it sucked. And they cut it out, yeah. They, so they can like cut out all they want. I'm the not going to yeah. do extra research to make this movie right. more enjoyable sure. for myself. I sure. watched it last night, and, it, and that speech sucked. Fine, but explain this. Sloth, open mouth kisses, chunk on the mouth. Is that just a delightful little mistake that they cut, that blah, blah, blah? No, it's just a weird thing where Chunk was probably getting supposed to get kissed on the cheek, but then leaned into it, and then Sloth just, almost his whole mouth goes it's over. exactly like the slap. Everything they did, he, they, that's part of the, and that's Richard Donner. I'm sorry, but you, when you have Superman, director of Superman, doing a kid's movie, they kind of tend to make things extreme, like the slap when when the they, he's really slapped the shit out of her. Who? Uh, I don't. I've got it. Who down. slapped who? Uh, you can't just say the, the slap. The, mo uh, the mom character. Jesus, I, my brain is. A, I'm high, yeah. dude. I can't just say whatever I want. Okay. No, not with not on a podcast with no context, <laughs> motherfucker. We got to be well, specific. Go read the whole thing. Because Austin and Kyle now. are say shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're fine, Kyle. Just chill. Just chill. You got something to say, you say it. Uh, but. Reminds me of Dario. Anyway, Sloth <laughs> kisses Chunk right on the mouth. No excuses for that. <laughs> uh, so Data should die. Should have died right when that pit opened. Because there's no way that like a little plastic shattering teeth and a, and a bungee cord is going to save him. But even just, what? even ignoring the bungee cord, whatever. The spike pit at the bottom. Okay. That's where everyone had to go to get to the next part. So, the only way to proceed to the ship through the, this is the one of the traps is to go into. Someone has to die. Basically, if you're in a group, one person falls into the pit, and as they're dying, goes, "There's a room down here, guys," and he's dead. Then you're like, "All right, let's get over some ropes. We'll go down there. This is how you get to the pirate treasure." Stati like just engineering wise, doesn't make much sense. Okay. Now we're gonna get into. Oh God, how do you watch Home Alone? <laughs> You're looking for now, engineering. But now we're going to get into what my biggest critique of this movie is. So is your name Ben Dover? I need <laughs> uninterrupted, Mike, because this is this is this is a rant. Okay. God. So I was like, huh? Right when they walked into that big skull, you know, the iconic skull cave entrance, I start thinking, wait a minute. Wait, wait just one fucking minute. What are we doing? The Goonies are trying to find a pirate ship from a one-eyed pirate and his crew. Am I supposed to believe that this pirate crew somehow built all of these fucking traps? Like, they didn't find a already booby-trapped fucking place to go to. So everything that is in this movie... That is a booby trap. That's a Rube Goldberg. That is giant, hundreds of pounds of of slabs of stone suspended on ropes that could be just triggered on a on a guillotine. So all the Home Alone traps. All the yeah. Home Alone shit. Yeah. They these pirates built it. I, so I have issues. So I put okay. How did they carve that skull into the fucking thing? Fine, they carved it. Whatever. Then think about. 
the key. They had to take a little skull rock key, put it into a rock formation with little rock things sticking out, all stone, right? And then somehow crank that counterclockwise to trigger something to get a perfect bowling ball, smooth bowling ball piece of stone, I'm assuming, to roll down some fucking gutters uh, to come and then trigger blah, 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 right? So, uh, okay. you didn't have a problem with any of the Indiana Jones. It was fine then. Nope, because it's in the, the Indiana, no, shot. it's not. It's absolutely yeah. not, Mike. Indiana Jones uh, went to an ancient, like, Mayan temple that was built hundreds of years ago, maybe thousands of year, years ago, by an indeterminate amount of people over an indeterminate amount of time. I could buy any of these um, contraptions that mm-hmm. exist sure. if it was, oh, we found this from a thousand years ago an ancient civilization built these traps I'd be like great they used a lot of manpower and ingenuity they had the resources they did everything they needed to do to get it done do I think pirate crew that's already at each other's throats trying to like get at some treasure they somehow like among them are like ultimate Rube Goldberg engineers and they're fucking building these things they should have been like hey maybe let's just leave the treasure and go be mad genius inventors and go build shit out for the fucking people we'd be respected we'd be loved we can use these rich no instead they kill each other it doesn't matter so i put um okay i put it i put yeah he would have been way better off starting uh uh spending tre- oh i also put they should have just spent the fucking treasure so think about that they spent probably if we're talking what those contraptions needed if us to the let's go the four of us if we had money and time and resources could we find a cave somewhere and build even close to what these pirates came up with probably not i think we maybe have a few booby traps uh (laughs) whatever that's it right but we wouldn't be able to do these are the most ingenious pirates of all time i'm just saying Instead of doing all that, spending and spending a year or years of their lives building these things, they should have just split the treasure and spent it. And they would have had much happier lives. I'm saying the pirates were stupid. Um, oh, and as you're going through the cave, there appears to be giant rib cages. And I'm sure it's just for the aesthetic, but if you look in the cave, there are giant rib cages that would serve i don't know like a uh i don't even know i honestly can't think of an animal big enough to maybe a blue whale like a if that's mammoth what, or something too yeah a like mammoth, mammoth or a blue mammoth. whale but it's, i'm just like that's a little silly maybe some bones i would have bought but like there's too much of that anyway i'm sorry thank you for not interrupting me everybody i'm, I'm my rant's over but uh <laughs> that's some bullshit is what i'm saying it's so crazy. I, I thought I really thought you were gonna love this movie. No, I love it. It's great. <laughs> it sounds like it. No, why? What's? Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I put. Okay, okay, okay. Play the bones. How the fuck did they? Did this pirate bring an organ connected to a fucking skeleton? And all these fucking bones connect that. To floorboards that open up into an endless abyss. What the fuck is going on? Is what I'm saying. There's no way these pirates did this. There's no fucking way on earth that this could ever exist. Like, no. The play the bones, Mike? Play the bones? Here's you want me to. You want to be really freaked out by it? Imagine being that actor because I. Uh, this is surprising. Of all those skeletons in this, they're all real. Except for the one main bad guy from back in the day. He was plastic. But the, the, all the skeletons are real. So that guy really is touching like, bones. So that chick really did play his bones. Yes. Real bones. Then they all get into some fucking water slide action. That's fun. Goes on yeah. way too long. But uh, It's because they had so much fun. I let's all go into stuff. one tube. <laughs> exit five tubes. <laughs> Explain that shit, Mike. Just a fucking blip, blip, blip. No, it's fucking have bullshit. Been, is what it is. Have you ever been to a water park? I have, and not they once. Have multiple, yeah, no, can, I don't think it's possible. I don't think there's a single water park on earth that has a go into one tube <laughs> and then perfectly will separate five or six people into their own separate things. No, bullshit. 
I call bullshit Goonies. Uh, oh, and then I put... That's an awful lot of spider webs on that pirate ship. Maybe too many. <laughs> How many fucking spiders are down there? And if you're going to put that many fucking spider webs on a pirate ship, there better be a scene with fucking spiders. So and there you, wasn't a spider scene I call bullshit Goonies. There's a lot of, a lot of this stuff that you don't pick out in other movies. That's interesting because... I mean, we're talking about Richard Donner and Steven yeah. Spielberg. I don't give a shit and about a lot of the movies. Every movie they do is like that. Mike, I didn't give a shit about Slipstream. What, you think I'm I'm sitting there going like, <laughs> yeah. oh man, they're not slipping the stream Jeez. enough. I don't even remember what the fuck that movie's about. You think I give a <laughs> shit? No. <laughs> no. So this, is a, this one's angering you. Why? <laughs> because it's a movie that I remember liking as a kid. Right. I watched it maybe like a couple times as a kid, and then once as like a young adult maybe, and then gave it a break because, you know... It, I'm not obsessed with it, but <laughs> now that I've watched movie, it again, man. the nostalgia, you know, got me through. Uh, I have more of those when you're done. <laughs> oh, great. I'm, yeah. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, oh, and I put, uh, man, Data, with all of his, uh, with all of his contraptions, his fucking boxing thing, yeah. his fucking oil slicked glove, or oil yeah. slicked shoes. That sure is, uh, Mike, uh, would you like to do the honors? It's 007. It's James Bond. Nope. Say your catchphrase. I do, my, uh, basically slapstick? It's okay. basically some fucking <laughs> slapstick. I literally wrote down data, and then I was going to write it. Nope, dot, dot, dot. Mike, please do the honors. Do you, do you understand that whole sl- thing? Once again, going back to the Spielberg aspect of this movie, that whole thing with him, his whole, his whole personality is based on the fact that Spielberg is like the only thing he desperately wanted to do a Bond movie. And they turned him down twice. So this was like his fuck you to those producers. Well, it wasn't a Bond movie, but I can see... No, that I, was absolutely the character. No, but He's got 007 right on his belt. Yeah, I can understand that. He <laughs> makes like, so many overt references to 007. Yes. But what I'm saying is Spielberg didn't make a Bond movie in response. What he did was he added he his... Said, he added his perspective of when he was a child wanting to make a Bond movie as the focal point no, of Data, which is, a, which is no, which is which is cute. What I'm saying, as an adult, you don't think Spielberg wanted to direct a Bond movie when he, he was did. a kid? He did. He was turned down twice. Oh, I don't know when he was a kid. I don't know. But none of this I'm, felt I'm just Bond-like. What he to me. said, "I'm sorry, I'm just repeating what he okay, said." Okay, fine, whatever. Like, but again, I don't care what he says. I watched the movie. Yeah. And what I'm and and I, I you know it didn't feel Bond-like at all. Like he says, "I'm the James kid? Bond" a <laughs> lot. But he just feels like a Bond fanboy. He didn't feel like James Bond. What about? No, no, no. He is. A, that's what I'm. That's exactly what I just said. The kid is. But like, you said it was like a direct response it, to the, him not being allowed to do a Bond movie. I'm, right. Okay. Well, yeah. whatever. Um, okay. So I said. So Chunk just decided. <laughs> oh, this is towards the end. I was like, oh, so Chunk's like, you're gonna live with me now, sloth. <laughs> I'm like, oh. What does fucking Paris have to say about that? He just dis- unilaterally gets to decide. Sl- hey, Mom, Dad, I met this giant man. Um, we fed each other chocolate. Just put it into each other's mouths. Real romantic. Like, he kissed me full-blown on the mouth. We went on a pirate adventure. He uh, and, and now he's going to live with us. He's been in captivity for and, his whole life. So, so what, since everything here seems so negative, what's, the, what's your opinion of Sloth as a character then? What a, he's great. Okay, you like sloth? I was just curious. That's my There's nothing wrong with I think his, I think his, the practical effects on his face are a little too much. They could have toned it down a bit. A I feel like, I feel like his head. He looked like Toxic, didn't he? His, he yeah, like he looks like Toxic Avenger, Avenger yeah. and I'm like, they could have toned it down. Not that I get what they're going for. They wanted to make him grotesque right. so that you are repulsed at first, so that you can fall in love with him but not later. So bad, right? Those, yeah. But I don't know. Oh, okay. So. Uh, the kids go missing. They're gone all night. The parents all, like, soup. They show up in a van with the police. They run over to the Goonies. They're hugging. They're crying. It's a peaceful family reunion. They're talking about octopuses that never got fought. And the fucking douchebag landlord lawyer guy is like, well, I need those contract signs, so I'm going to go down to the fucking heartfelt reunion of these kids that went missing. It's probably the news that night. It's like, local kids missing, please. We're, we're doing a canvas search. Someone probably is like, oh, I saw him coming up on the beach, send, you know, whatever. This guy shows up, and he's like, I need you to sign this fucking thing. 
and then I put this. I'm willing to forgive every single thing that I wrote above. Everything that I've had issues with, the Rube Goldberg, the fact that the Pirates were these mad geniuses that fucking built all this shit, I'm willing to forgive every single thing that I just said, but I will not forgive the fact that when that dad was signing the contract, he took the most obscene pause in between his first name and his last name that it gave not only... Chunk and Sloth, or whoever, no, whoever, the, the, it gave the, the Hispanic maid chick time to pull, like, he literally, well, the thing. he yeah. puts the contract on the back, writes his first name, okay? Then the ladies start to pull out the fucking sock. He's then adjusting his glasses, getting ready to write his next, uh, his next, uh, his, the next name. She's over there, she pulls out some rubies, or you don't know what she's, she's looking at it going, oh, and then she goes, no, it's a butt, the butt, you know, she's saying some Spanish, right? The guy's, oh, he's adjusting his glasses again. He's about to pick up his pen and write his next, his last name. Then, fucking mouth starts translating. No, right? No, no spell. No, right? No sign. No sign. Don't sign it. And this guy still hasn't written his fucking last name. <laughs> That's not how fucking time works. It's not how signatures work. It's not how fucking contracts work. No, that was the dumb... Explain that away, Mike. There's no excuse. That was bad filmmaking. Bad filmmaking. Steven Spielberg, you've made great bangers. You're going to make great bangers. You don't need to hear this from me. That was bad. Wait, no. Who who directed this? Richard Donner? I can't shit on him. Uh, so, so Fuck it. Chris Columbus, Steven Spielberg, be better. The writing. Or the editor. Who, who fucking edited this movie? Who fucking edited the movie? Who edited this shit? I don't know. Does he even give you that? Yeah, yeah, we'll so find him. We'll okay. find him. Who <laughs> edited him. this shit? We'll find him. Who let that fucking sh- that that stupid signature bullshit happen? Oh, it was Tom. Oh, it was edited by Michael Caine and Steven Steve Spielberg. Spielberg. But I see he's uncredited. Oh, Michael Caine, what have you done? Oh, con, con. <gasps> it's like Ryan. Con. <laughs> Con! <laughs> uh. Oh, he no did West Side Story, Story Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park, Minority. You're better than this, man. <laughs> now I'm going to look at all of your shit for those little moments that you thought. No, no I'm going to watch every edited movie by Richard Kahn. And I'm going to watch every signature that anyone has ever made. And I'm going to see how long it takes them to write their first and last name. Because it's interesting, though, when you think about it, like, like one of his was Ready Player One, which we just talked about. It's interesting how, how much they tie together. Well, ready. Okay, yes, because He's an but Ready, ready player, player One, one. but Ready Player One is specifically fine tuned to hit all the nostalgia button that Goonies organically had being made at the time of the well, nostalgia. See, that that to whole be made. pet scene thing we were talking about earlier was five minutes here, five minutes. Here. It's very. That's what I'm saying. The style but, uh, is very, yeah, yeah, I yeah, but. Now that I'm, I bet he sucked at editing some parts on that too. I like how he's he doesn't know how time works, but he he edited uh, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time. <laughs> yeah, you motherfucker, man! You motherfucker! Yeah, yeah, very similar. Almost. Learned. What else did oh, he do? He did oh, he AI did rain. Too, he did reindeer games. AI. Fuck yeah, dude! Look, we love you, man. You've done yeah, a lot of movies. <laughs> Casper, hell yeah, ninety five's Casper. I bet you phoned that one in. That's probably why I put Steven Spielberg's name on there, too. So he wanted to know, hey, I wasn't cutting this all up. That was he did Spielberg. Arachnophobia. That had to be uh, <laughs> not a fun movie to edit. You got to think. Hey, Steven, shouldn't no we rabble. put some spiders on this pirate ship? Fuck no. No. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Is that all your damn negative notes yet, Andy? You got more? Yeah, almost. Because uh, you got something to add. I want to hear them. I want to hear all the negative shit. Because I can't. Oh, I'm yeah. having a hard time believing Hold on. I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, so... <laughs> When the dad is ripping up the contract, and I'll show you if you if you need to no. see it, but when the dad is ripping up the contract, not only does he miss a rip, yeah, uh, he, does, yeah. he doesn't rip it into enough pieces that when he, it does the very staged throwing him up in the air yes. shot, the <laughs> amount of pieces that fly away are way too many pieces than what he actually physically yes. ripped up. Bullshit, Michael Kahn! You didn't. You thought we. You thought the your your stupid fucking shot of all the the money shot of the contract flying away, symbolizing <laughs> all of their right, worries yeah. going away. Yes. You thought that was your fucking gift to humanity? Fuck you! Are you alive? Hold on. Are you alive? Yeah, you're yeah, still you're alive. 1935. Right Holy shit! You're still old. Working. God, you're 90 years old. Almost. What was this last one? It's this year, isn't it? The Fablemans. 
yeah, of course. And upcoming, the wow. kidnapping of Edgardo Mortara. Wow. Oh, wow. Still working. Who's doing Still that? Still editing. <laughs> he's 90 something years old. Wait a minute. Is that right? Yeah. They're 1935. We're in 1920, or we're in 2024. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. Math. He's ninety. He's almost ninety. He's he he drew, he edited shit. So he's Spielberg's I guy. I can barely work, and I'm fifty-seven. I can barely Wait, get up 60, to work. Sixty-five plus twenty-four. <laughs> Wait, no. It's I mean, it's this. The math would be a hundred years ago is, yeah, is nineteen twenty-four, and so if you go ten years in past that, it's ninety. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Well, yeah. So. Anyway, wow. Michael Kahn, your uh, national treasure. I'm sure you've won a ton of Oscars. I mean, I'm looking at your IMDb. You're awesome. Good for you. But, but the fucking Goonies, you f- phoned in. You either didn't give a shit. Maybe it wasn't your thing. Maybe you were more excited about the color purple or uh, or or wisdom or yeah, fatal yeah. attraction or Empire of the Sun because you knew they were right around the corner. But you were like, or maybe the next Indiana Jones was on your mind. But no. Anyway. I'm not sure. Well, you're going to get the Spielberg guys after you, man. <laughs> you're like... No, no, Spielberg's great. We love him. But yeah. Michael Kahn can 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 get can can go back. I want Michael Kahn to go back and re-edit the Goonies a little bit and make it better. Give us give us a recut, Michael Kahn version. Well, no. I, wait a minute. What's the audience rating in this movie? What is Oh, the no, no. Well, we'll get there. I have one more. You've got it at like 12% apparently. <laughs> This movie ends on the ugliest bad blue screen effect that this movie has, and for some reason the credits start at the middle of the screen instead of the bottom, which just annoys me because it's just like it's a it's a stupid. That's another editing thing. Though. It's a, it really is yeah. Michael Kahn, yeah. bro. It's like you end on the worst blue shot screen of a pirate ship that's ever, and then you start the credits middle of the screen scrolling upwards. It's not even a stop and go kind of credit system. It's a scroll up, and you start from the middle up and it just doesn't make any sense and then also my last note I really am not a fan of the Cindy Lauper song and okay. they really kind of hammer that in and I'm not a fan so that was my take of the Goonies I give it a B plus what? <laughs> so Okay. Mike, <laughs> that was very interesting. <laughs> no, I want to hear the other negative here. I got to hear. The oh other yeah, side. I got. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, it so was like playing more. a game of Minesweeper, dude. Like I, I was wait, I was like, okay, Andy's going down this route. Awesome, it's gonna be funny. And it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny. I'm just it's... waiting. Like, I hope he doesn't pick my things, and yeah. he didn't. So <laughs> first thing, fuck yeah, let's uh, go. <laughs> when they're fucking with all the pipes, that's when I was like, oh shit, he's getting close. Uh, somebody built those pipes and put them down there and did not discover the secret cave leading to fucking treasure. And I'm like thinking, the guy who built those had to have died for that to make sense. He's like, oh, there's a fucking cave down here. And then he fucking falls and dies. And I'm like, where'd fucking Joe go? Wasn't it? Uh, well, he finished his <laughs> It job. was some engineer who just like, he's like, I did it. I connected all the pipes in a series of complicated things, all in this one central location. No one will ever need to ever come down here and make this, this ever again. Uh. And then, uh, so yeah, that's a big fucked up thing. Uh, then there's uh, when uh, he finally gets to the ship, uh, Sean Astin fucking gets to the ship, and he has, like, this weird, like, romance with fucking one-eyed Willie. Yeah, <laughs> which, yeah he does, yeah. And yeah. he's like... He loves him. He's like, he, he like he, wait a minute, isn't Sean Aston Frodo? Peanut butter? Or, one, or oh, Sam or somebody? Sam. He, we got more. Sam. He's Sam, so he's just playing the same character. He's, <laughs> he's He loves fucking One-Eyed Willie so yeah. much, and he's like, oh, leave some treasure for him. A guy him. who is a pirate, who, in reality, alcoholic rapist, that would have just fucking <laughs> slaughtered him with a sword. Pirates <laughs> were awful people. Yeah, he wouldn't have... What not Willie, space pirates, though. One-Eyed Willie did well, not give a fuck about any of these kids. <laughs> he would have killed all of them, taken the two girls, and you know what's going to happen there. And he's just like, oh, this is my best <laughs> friend. But, and then, <laughs> another thing. That ship, that ship would not have fucking floated there for that long at all. No, no God, no, yeah. Gosh. Um, How'd they get the fucking ship in there? In there. Real quick, just, because you know your notes. Can I just, can I just pause? Yeah. Can I pause you for one second? There's a philosophy thing that I've always thought was interesting. Just, just a side tangent for just a second. It's I forget what it is, but if you have like a boat, right, and you, uh, the boat gets damaged over time, and you have to replace a piece of it, right? So, you replace you replace one piece of wood, and you keep having to do this over and over again. Eventually, 
you've replaced every piece of wood on that boat. Is it the same boat or is it a new boat by that point? Because does the boat itself, is that the wood that it was originally? So like that pirate ship, for instance, just because when I see a boat, that's the first thing, that's the first like kind of train, for some reason my mind goes down, especially an old wooden style pirate ship. Because if you were to take that and just replace all the parts and rebuild it piece by piece, would it still be the same? Like you wouldn't put that in a museum, or you could, but you wouldn't probably, right? Um, I don't know. Anyway. Any, well, maybe at the theme park. It'd be a cool thing to have at the theme park. If no, yeah, it would be cool. Ship. I'm saying, you know, sure, having yeah. a rebuilt pirate ship is dope. But what would be more historically significant? Like, having one that wasn't fucked with, right? Or replaced, right? right? We put, like, the just the, the ruined version up. Because right. that's what we would want the OG version, right? But, I don't know. What do you think? Is it the same same I, boat or different boat? Same boat. Same boat. I mean, if you did it all at once, then, yeah, it would be a different boat. But okay. if it's just over time, then yeah, you know, it's still the same boat. Just all new parts. So, like, how does a, like, our bodies, we go from, like, an infant, right? And we somehow grow into, like, an adult human right. being. Like, are we collecting matter along the way? And then we start losing it. Like, how is that happening? Our bodies are getting significantly bigger. We're not sure, put yeah. into that package already. It's we're like just moving atoms from food to you. It's, you're moving the stuff. It's every, moving the, sure, okay, so if we're doing yeah. that, if we're consuming atoms and we're using right. that to build a human right. block and getting bigger and bigger sure. and bigger... Um, then oh, we have man. to consume less atoms to get less bigger. I well, read something on this. It's like every three point something years, uh, every cell in your body has died and been yeah. replaced. That's where I was going with this. You're also losing them all the time. So skin and hair and yeah. Are we the same people? I would argue yes. Because, obviously, right? But like... Well, yeah, because your brain does not change. But we're also it's not who we were. It's, more, it's external stuff you're shedding. It's... Well, no, your brain absolutely changes. But... Your consciousness, does that grow? Does it stay the does it just does it grow to meet the body that that it that it's adapting to? It depends to? on if they've got enough room to add more hard drives. Well, if it's okay, sure. If we're going off of simulation the theory, right, yeah. yeah. It's like it depends. But it just kind of seems like I don't know. Doesn't it kind of seem like Well your brain almost, cells your brain cells die that I believe your brain cells don't come back after they die. I heard and that so, they do. They do. I well, heard that you can regenerate brain them. cells. I heard. I feel like it's just like any other muscle in your in your shit. I think you can also. Uh, yeah, people we are not qualified to talk yeah, about this right now. Yeah, we really don't know. We so, really don't know. End of the movie. The, the <laughs> yeah. big the big fucking uh, jewel. They, fi- they find the jewels. <laughs> the housekeeping lady decides to reveal to everyone that there's jewels here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the glass. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. racist. I'm not racist. Um, yeah. But. The fact that they just, oh, these are our jewels. We found them from this fucking pirate ship. We can buy the whole fucking town or save it, every, save the house and everything. Uh, no, the government would swoop in and be like, Daddy wants a taste of that and fucking take it from them. Yeah. Anyone who finds treasure does not get to keep that treasure. They get to maybe keep a coin. So, like, people find... If they were smart about it. Okay, so here, I agree with you. If you were to go find a big treasure and bring it all back... You'd have to be very careful. You'd have to spread out your your. You'd be like, "Hey, yeah. my grandfather left me some doubloons." Too bad they did it in front of a live fucking television broadcast and they'll have. But the actually, town. that might actually lend lend to the credibility of 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 their claim because like these kids legitimately discovered a pirate ship. Mm-hmm. They could be like, "We discovered it. We discovered it, right?" And everyone would be like, "Okay, kids." And then the government steps in. No nah, shit. This is not not like this is on fucking news now, where it's like these kids. Discovered a fucking pirate ship. Oh shit! There's the pirate ship, right? Like that's dope. Like that's on. Mm-hmm. What happened to the pirate ship, though? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing a bunch of people got on boats. That was my next thing. A bunch of people got on boats and got the rest of the fucking treasure. That's what I'm saying. Ship. Yeah. Also, uh, considering the ownership of the treasure, didn't the Fratellis own that fucking building? And so technically, it would be all their treasure, all their money. It's on their property. Well, but are, be half, and then half of theirs. But they're wanted criminals. Business. So the government can yeah, seize those but assets. That's, that's our money, and we're going to get a really good lawyer with it. Mm-hmm. The best lawyer. That's so, a good point. Fucking uh, B+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle? So that is, yeah. Any takeaways, Kyle? Yeah. Any takeaways for the Goonies? Well, I haven't seen the Goonies in years. I, I want to watch it again. Then that would have been cool to do before the podcast. I should... 
Austin should have been better. Yeah. <laughs> it's not on me, man. I was ignorant. <laughs> okay. Well, y'all got 2B+, plus, which I'm actually surprised by. Well, give it a, just give it a rating, rating, though. Yeah. Real quick. Like, based on what you remember. Yeah, you told them the rating system, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We B have a different rating high. system. So we go from B, which we... I guess we'd just be like the... that's we Whatever. We just start at B, and that's our best. Um, and then C, D, and then F, right? And F is bad, but we have a grade lower than F. And it's W for waste of fucking time. Like, don't even go near this movie. Do I have one? We just don't have. We just don't grade A's. So B plus yeah. is as high as you can give it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would say it's a B, but I haven't seen it in years, so it's like I said. You but... can use pluses and minuses too. Yeah. So if you if you think it's a B plus, but no pressure. You said B. no pressure. B is fine. We'll do B. B plus B B plus, and then Mike, your okay. last here's thought. My, here's my last thought. <laughs> it is so weird hearing all your names because all I'm gonna say is. It's timeless. It's like a time. My, even my grandkids, I interview, I actually interviewed them on film. You'll be able to go on the YouTube and see that if you want. Yeah. And uh, there's a, I interviewed my grandkids after we watched it. Uh, there's some funny stuff in there with their answers, but I, there's no comment on it. It's just, it's hilarious when you hear their answers. And like their favorite scene was the statue scene. Huh. With the, the penis thing on the statue. Yeah. And, you know, turning it upside down the whole, yeah. That's a funny it, scene. It's a funny scene. Anyway, but it was interesting to see an 11-year-old granddaughter and 13-year-old grandson react to that scene. Sure. <laughs> the grandson yeah. is laughing his ass off, and my granddaughter is like... <laughs> you know, yeah, no, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, and that's how right. it probably was in the it's theaters a, back so in the I'm, day. But I'm, see, I'm watching this movie with my grandchildren. Yeah. It was so heartwarming. Well, my grandchildren aren't alive yet. I understand, but someday... <laughs> How dare so what I'm you saying, but, but like you were saying about rewatching 20 years, and, and I can see that if I'd been around when I was a kid, but I'll want to rewatch it again in the next couple of years once. And then, I mean, we bought it actually to watch it because it wasn't actually on Tubi anymore. Yeah, sorry Which, about sorry, that, guys. Uh, uh, we just took a random. I, we, it happens we, sometimes, it just goes really, off in the Are meantime. you talking about this movie or no? This we, movie? The no good, okay. Goonies is not on Tubi. Right, right. It, it was. And then it came off on the first, and we. But we Everybody has a copy. But by now, when they hear it, it's not going to be on there. But Everyone mostly, has a copy of that fucking movie, yeah. right? And you can get it in DVD. If you don't have it, go to any pawn shop. We'll have four copies. In there. Yeah. Um, but so the nostalgia of it. I mean, it's if we had some higher than a B plus, I'd give it to it because it's literally now my favorite movie experience. Now that doesn't make it the best movie I've ever seen, but the experience of watching this with my grandchildren for the first time. It was amazing. It's like came around full circle when we did Die Hard and Sean never saw it. and, it, and Right. And now it's you. Yeah, to an old classic. So you give it a, a, a B plus. Yeah, there's no... <laughs> well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Goonies. B plus. Of course it's a fucking B plus. What did you think was going to fucking happen? You think we're going to watch The Goonies and then not give it a fucking B plus? It's timeless. It's... One of the best family adventure movies of all time. Yeah, I shit on it, but I shit on it from a place of love. Michael Kahn should have done a fucking better job at editing it, but that's nobody's fault but his own. Come <laughs> on, you old bitch. All right. Uh, so I watched The Underdogs last night. What? Snoop Dogg's <laughs> Did you really? youth football movie, which uh, is a... Is a ripoff of, of course, the Mighty Ducks. But what I love is, so he takes like he's a he's a, a, a football guy, a football player who, you know, was like cocky and you know started fucking up, you know, was a bad guy, gets into a car accident and uh, and gets community service and he's picking up dog shit and he sees a fucking football team and he goes. Uh, he, you know, he starts coaching them, but for all the wrong reasons, just for like Instagram clout, like, hey, look, I'm better now. Anyway, there's a turnaround, but he's sitting there with, um, I think it's Omar Epps. Um, I might be wrong. No, it's not Omar Epps. Uh, am I, who the fuck? He's, he's there with his buddy and his buddy's like, oh man, it's just like, it's just like Emilio Estevez and uh, Snoop Dogg's like, who the fuck is that? He's like... <laughs> You know, Mighty Ducks. He, 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 he like, fucks up. Yeah. He goes, he gets a team, and everyone loves him. Uh, and <laughs> Snoop Dogg's like, holy fucking shit, hell yeah. And the kids cuss, and Snoop Dogg cusses, and everyone cusses to the kids. Snoop Dogg, the whole time, he's like, get the fuck up. You're like, get the fuck up here, you little bitch. Get over here. Like, he, he's mean to the kids. It's funny. It's heartwarming. I teared up a few times watching that movie, because there's, like, a few scenes where you're just like, oh, shit, that gets you in the feels. It's got, like, a... A little bit of that 
what's that Keanu Reeves movie where I love it when you call me Big Pop? Um, that little black kid and he gets killed. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know the movie. I don't, I'm God, is it something when September ends or? That's a Green Day song. Uh, <laughs> it's a Keanu Reeves movie. Keanu Reeves. He ho- he Love coaches. Call me Big Papa. Black kid gets shot. He, what the fuck? He is coaches that movie? a he coaches a, a little uh, baseball team. Hardball. There we go. Hardball. He coaches a team, and then the little kid. Uh, he gets killed by gang violence, but he loved that. Uh, he loved coming out to. I love it when you call me Big Papa. That song when he came out to play. And so that you started using it as their like kind of theme going forward. That's a like, fucking dope movie. You never seen Hardball? No. Hell yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that's that's Keanu Reeves' uh, Mighty Ducks. If we're just on the right. Mighty right. Ducks right. roll, and I liked Snoop Dogg's Mighty Ducks. I think I'm a fan of now the genre Mighty Ducks. <laughs> that's I'm okay with that. Like I like when I find a new subgenre. I really enjoyed when I found out that Aliens uses something called retrofuturism, which I never under... I, I was like, what is that? And what it is is like, if you watch Aliens, they're, they made that movie in the 70s, right? Or like, uh, I think like late 70s or early 80s, yeah. right? They had no idea that touch screens were going to be a thing, that we were going to have fucking just cell phones or, and Bluetooth and like little earpieces and shit. So all of their futuristic technology, quote unquote, is like analog. It's like putting discs, disc drives into fucking little machines and watching like green text pop up like MS-DOS, right? But still, Alien or Aliens takes place in the future from where we exist now. So that's an example of retrofuturism, where it's like a futuristic point of view from a retro, or it's future from a retro point of view. From like, they're like, still looking at it as what the eighties would see the future. Yes, as. exactly. Jules Verne, right? He did like retrofuturism, like go, from our perspective. Ghosts of Mars. Ghosts of Mars is retrofuturism, exactly. You see yeah. those fucking CCTVs they had? It's, it's yes, like ex- huge. and that's weird because that came out in like two thousand and something, right? So, uh, oh, maybe that's retrofuturism. It would be, well, because they're still doing Mars is 2179, or what is when that took yeah. place, remember? So, uh, they, so yeah, it's 100 years, 100 whatever years in the future, 70 years in the future. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. But then there's like analog retrofuturism, there's like, um, uh, like cyberpunk, but you can do cyberpunk retrofuturistic cyberpunk, where it's like what people thought cyberpunk futuristic would be it's just there's a lot of cool things like, so now that just makes me think of those kids from back to the future when they have the the, the guys that are chasing exactly them on the it's, that's the that's a perfect example of retro futurist of uh, futurism that's like a classic because and it's almost i still would love to see um because what they're what they're kind of working on right now uh, in real life is you know how uh, have you ever gone to the um, have you seen that thing on the airport now where it shows instead of you know how um, it shows all the departures and, and boardings right that that all those like all those like different things right yeah. so there's an airport that has come up with technology now where when you come in it uh, it like scans your ticket it knows who you are and knows where you're standing and all you can see is your boarding information on that screen it like focuses it all up so that's all you can see but everyone else who's looking at the screen can only see what their shit is so it's like a completely direction based like this is just for you so now you can look at the boarding screen on that and just see your information know exactly where to go and what they're trying to do is like with that all of the terminals that show that will just direct you where you're supposed to go so everywhere you look it's like hey you're due that way terminal this there's arrows pointing this way so, like, everything is designed to just get you where you're going. But everyone else who looks at these things, it works for them too, right? And so what they're working on is, like, we could potentially have directed, targeted ads, like, on billboards and stuff. Kind of what Back to the Future did, if you consider Jaws 3D, where the shark comes out and does that, as sort of a directed towards Michael J. Fox's character, uh, Marty McFly, in that moment. So, like, that's kind of a, actually, an example of, like, where we could be heading. But I don't think we're going to have, um, we are, and we did get self-lacing, we got self-tying uh, shoes. Mm-hmm. I think we are close-ish to hoverboards, maybe. Maybe, like, we'll get hover technology now that we have drones and stuff. Like, you could technically put enough 
drones underneath a hoverboard. I've seen people online do that, where they've built flying boards that use drones. On hoverboards for a second? When I was a kid, my dad fucked with me so hard watching behind-the-scenes footage of them using the hoverboard. And I was like, Dad, are hoverboards real? And he's like, yeah, but they're, they're not releasing them to the public because they're too dangerous. <laughs> so for a while, I believed that they were actually a fucking thing. Uh, speaking of parent deception, I'm just going to get into this real quick. One of the One of the most diabolical things my parents have ever done to me was, I think it was second grade or third grade, I was in a class and we were reading, it was around Christmas time, and we were reading this book. And this book was probably one of the first books that I actually was into. Like it was a, it was about a, a school putting on a Christmas play. It was perfectly timed for the season. I was like really getting into it. I was, I think it's the first book that in my mind started painting pictures of what the words were saying. So it's like I had read books before, but like, you know, children's books or whatever with pictures that I would like associate with the words. But this was like the first just like all it is is words. And I had to make the pictures myself in my head. And I started to understand maybe the, the beginnings, the spark of a love of reading, right? It's, I, this is important to the story. So I finish this book and my teacher says, she says, um, she goes, guess what, everybody? You're not going to believe it. I went to Blockbuster and they have a movie adaptation of the book we're all watching. Uh, that we're, The book we're all reading. And I was like, what? And she's like, I, I'm renting it tonight. We're going to watch it tomorrow. She like told us. And I'm like, yeah, this is what? I just finished the book. I was so fucking excited. Next morning, my parents take my sister and I and they're like, you're not going to school today. And I'm like, what? They're like, you have to go to the doctor's office. And I, we're like, what? And they start driving. And they're starting to drive us. And we're going and we're driving. And they're like, what are we going for? Are we going to get shots? They're like, yeah, you're going to get shots. But they're going to check for hemorrhoids. And we're like, I'm like, second grade, third grade. I'm like, what's a hemorrhoid? And she's like, well, they're going to put a glove on. They're going to put a finger in your butt. And they're going to search around for hemorrhoids. And I'm against the glass just crying, right? Like I'm just, I just snot and tears just crawling. I'm, it's the most horrific feeling. I just think a man's about to put a finger in my butt. And I, it's the most... I don't get to watch the movie. I don't get to watch the I'm just thinking of the movie. I just think it's the most horrific thing ever. And then my dad, he goes, well, shit. I'm lost. I can't find the doctor's office. Well, here's Disneyland. Let's just go here instead. Which was their plan all along. But... I'll tell you this, if you want your kids to enjoy the first half of the day at Disneyland, don't tell them before you get there that, that, that they're going to get hemorrhoid check. Because I think it took me hours to calm down. Oh, yeah. Like, even at Disneyland, I'm still... <laughs> Dad, will your dad adopt me? Will Andy Rice Sr. adopt me? This sounds odd. He's like, you know, I'm supposed to take him to the doctor's office. Let's just go take him to Disneyland and give him diabetes while we're here. Yeah, jeez. That was uh, that was rough, parents. Um, all right, so let's get into. Uh, well, we're supposed to remind you of something too. What was that? I don't remember. Well, that doesn't help. <laughs> I figured you would remember when I said. I think it was about, about Alan Wake too, and I think we okay. talked about it. Perfect um, setting for Goonies, though. Just yeah. Last last mention of Goonies. Uh, perfect movie where when you sleep in, it's fucking raining outside, you have your comfort food with you, and you're just chilling in your living room, no one's home, and just That's watching That's exactly the how we watched it last night. It was just kind of rainy, and then they were like the... We got a pile, made a pile with the grandkids, and me and my wife had sat and watched it on our giant screen in the living room. It was so cool. You know what I did? Was I played about four hours of Alan Wake 2, and I got really scared and uncomfortable. Oh, and then before thing, yeah. going to bed, better, yeah. I watched The Goonies yeah. and was <laughs> had a perfect, like, peaceful palate sleep. Palate cleanser. Yeah, it's a great palate cleanser. Yeah, so if you need a Today's palate cleanse. world, even, yeah. Um, oh, by the way, exciting news. Um, if you guys remember the very good um, miniseries, uh, Spartacus, yeah. Blood on the Sand. Do you remember Blood that? Blood on the Sand, yeah. It was great. Loved that shit. It was like 300, the show, but it was like yeah, Spartacus. It was good. Um, and then, unfortunately, the, the, the main actor died. Okay. Um, but then they still made seasons after. New season coming out. New season who? of Spartacus. Of Blood and Sand? Yeah, of yeah, Blood and good. Sand, yeah. Do we know who the actor is? I think it's the guy from the last one, the long-haired dude. Okay. All right, so, Mike, what is your movie recommendation? Okay. Uh, well, we honestly, I didn't have one before I came because I was going to say I'm not sure about what's happening next week, which I'm still not. 
But well, it's regular well, episode with the next Super Bowl week. next week. Well, no, but I just, remember I'm going to be out of town Saturday, and you've got something Saturday night, so I don't know when we're going to record is all I was getting at. So uh, maybe Friday, whatever. That's neither here nor there. Uh, the We got this theme with the space weed today, mm-hmm. and then pirates. So I was thinking space pirates. The movie when Space I think, Pirates? No, no. That's not on Tubi. I, that was my first thought, but it's not on Tubi. But when I searched for it, the Ultimate Space Pirate movie came up. Something we've all probably seen before. Hold on, let me see if I can guess. Lost Lost Treasure Planet? No, Ultimate Space mm. Pirate movie to me. Well, Treasure Planet is a great space pirate movie. Um, hold on, how I about... I don't think, kind of, well, space, other planet. This Maybe isn't worth space. This isn't worth the podcasting time. What, no. uh, what is it? No, but that's closer, Is it? but Mad Max. Hmm. Interesting take on the word space and pirate. Yeah. And it's another planet. Yeah. Wait, Mad Max. Mad Max does not take place on another planet. It takes place on Earth. I guess it is. Yeah. It takes place in Wasteland, Australia. Okay. <laughs> if it came up in the search, I don't know. Talk, talk to AI. There's two things came up: Mad Max and a movie called Space Truckers. That's the two things that came up when I typed okay. it on Tubi. I'm just gonna I, for the for the listeners yeah. at home. I don't want to give out bad information. Right. Uh, Mad oh, Max. Yeah. Takes place. I mean, it does take place okay, in Australia. Yeah, yeah. It's Australia. No, I'm, I'm good. You're right. I think of it as futuristic, space, hyper yeah. futuristic. A vengeful space. cop and a sadistic yes. motorcycle gang face okay. off in a chaotic so, way. So, but anyway, that's what came up. But my other one was Space Truckers. And I didn't even read the description. I go click on Space Truckers. Okay. Let's see the description of Space Truckers. Oh, real quick. And I'll choose between those two. Is Road Warrior on here? Because if we're going to do Mad Just Max, type can in we. Space Pirates. I know, but is Road Warrior on here? Because I, I would rather so. watch the better. I don't think it is. It's not. Okay. Yeah. Well, then. Space Truckers is what's on when you, when you do Space Pirates. Go <laughs> Space Truckers. That's yeah. What I, no, this looks. Is this your. Is this your. That's, so that's my actual recommendation. This one. Space, space Truckers. truckers. Okay. Yes. Steven Dorff, Dennis Hopper. Yes. Oh, good Lord. A space trucker and his fiance head back to Earth, oblivious to their cargo of 5,000 disintegrator robots, who are. Which they're hijacked by space pirates. Okay. So that's why I put in space pirates, and this is what came up. I have no Damn idea. It. Obviously, I've never seen it. Mask. It looks like our kind of movie. That's all. That's oh like, yeah, there we go. That's yeah. the shit right there, Mike. Um, so, okay. That's my pick. All right, Austin. All right. So this one, I actually watched some of it uh, two nights ago. Yeah. Uh, with Kyle here. And Kyle was smoking a joint that my mom rolled for him. Nice. Your mom's and great. This movie, I just got into it so much because it was just like fucking out there that I started smoking the joint. Oh, fuck. And being notorious for the guy who just never smokes on this podcast. Yeah. What is it? I'm excited. Fucking, it's from 1956. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Sci fi starring Leslie Nielsen. What's it called? Forbidden Planet. Oh. Oh, hey. If. Forbidden Planet is it's, not on here. It was. Is it? Forbidden World is on here, which we cannot watch. <laughs> that it? Yeah, Forbidden Planet. Isn't that it? Yeah, there that it one. Is. There okay. it is. All right, so one hour and a half. A crew on a sp- on a mission to a distant forbidden planet discovers that there are two survivors of a spaceship that crashed two decades prior. Oh, but it stars. You should have led with it. Stars Walter Pigeon. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> should have led with that. You know Walter Pigeon of Cinderella and La- Roger Hammerstein Cinderella. K V Paris hit the deck. Elizabeth Taylor. Mm-hmm. The last time I saw Paris and the house across the bay. Yeah. And of course, look, look at the robot on that's that. That's the cover. French version, I guess, of the Paris. Danger, Will Robinson. Yeah, that looks. F- so you both picked some fucking cheese. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Kyle, did you have a movie? Oh yeah, I got you right here. Check it out. Oh fuck yeah! It's a movie. Uh, Hard boiled. It was made in 1992. It's about this cop and he's working like against the yakuza and stuff. Is it on Tubi? I'm not sure if it's on Tubi, but I, I think just it is. Thought of it. It's, but I like the pitch. Um, so we have hard. We have hard boiled, which is not on Tubi, but in its place we could do. Sin City Which 2. Comes up, <laughs> Sin City 2 comes up when you type for it. Or my camera. Or... Dude, what's on? Is oh, that too? I think. That looks fucking sick. What is this? Oh, 1930s Prohibition era in New oh, York City. Oh, it's a City. series. That's a series. Oh, it's a series, but it, it's... It was on dust. It's a future sentient... Oh, so it's like Prohibition era 
detective drama, oh, but with cool. robots. It does look cool. Yeah, it does look pretty fucking cool. I'm gonna watch that just on my own. Yeah, but that's not my because it's a show. Right. Uh, I'm actually it, it, uh, weirdly enough, I I went with the horror route a little bit. Um, but the Covenant, it's not really horror, but I I just I saw it on here last night. I fucking love it. It's the craft, but with dudes, and it's the just. Covenant. If you've seen the craft, that's basically it. It's just like four dudes find out that they're warlocks and they they have like a 2006 graphics over the top fucking. There's a scene that I just really like where they're on a uh, like a high speed chase with the cops and they use magic to get out of it in an interesting way that I like. That's like they're the magic in this feels more realistic, like the craft did. Remember if you've the watched craft, if you watch the craft, a lot of it was like you could tell they were getting in over their heads. As it was slowly kind of building up to it, like they didn't just like Harry Potter get a wand instant. This... All you have to do is say the right fucking words, and you've got super magic. This is like teenagers working together to try yeah, to fucking I... work something that's beyond their grasp. It's good. Yeah, and Sebastian Stan, and then but Taylor Kitsch. I think this might have been his first movie. Uh, Taylor Kitsch is who again? Is he from? Um, uh, is he John Carter of Mars? Yes. Yeah, think, he is. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's also Friday Night Lights yeah, and Battleship. Friday Night Lights, yeah, so I actually uh, love him so in Friday Night Lights. what's his first one that comes up if you click on Yeah, yeah. I'm curious I'm what this was his first movie or not. Look how smooth he looks in that he's fucking IMDb. Yeah. Though. Jeez, man. Hire Taylor yeah, Kitsch. He's a good he's looking dude. All right. Dude, yeah. Why isn't he on Sexiest People magazines or whatever? So What am I doing? All right. No, there, Kyle, Kyle XY. Kyle XY. Love that show. He's a camper. It's one episode. You guys ever see Kyle XY? Oh, John Tucker Must Die. Oh, yeah. That's a fun one. Snakes on a plane, and then the and Covenant. Then the Covenant. Yeah, so it was early, 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 and then he was Gambit. Yep. Um, but uh, Kyle X Y, there it's the weird. TV series, yeah. Look at the picture. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have a belly button. That's mm-hmm. why it's just a person with right. a shirt lifted up. This is kind of a hard thing to see show from a distance. Like, oh, I really like this show, and then yeah. people just see like, what the fuck? And it's just yeah. some dude <laughs> showing his fucking ass. Uh, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't have a belly button. It's just some some dude wakes up with no memory, no belly button. And he's like a super genius and he can has all these abilities and he gets adopted by some like good natured family. And then there's a government agency trying to get their project back, which is him. And it's Chuck before Chuck. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. it is Chuck before Chuck. And it, it was on, I think, ABC um, or whatever. But at the time, I really liked it when I was a kid. It was like one of those after school kind of shows. And it just, mm-hmm. it hit right. And it's streaming on Hulu if you want to watch it. It is. It's streaming yeah. on Hulu. I would, yeah. If you're, if that sounds interesting to you. If, um, I also thought the main actor, Matt Dallas, I don't know what. What he's done since. I don't know what he's done since. What's I don't, he known for? Not, uh, nothing. Nothing, yeah. Like, I don't get it. He, he had no, a whole he was good show. In I do remember that. He was good in it. Oh, here's a picture of him naked in something. Oh, Kyle XY. That's where yeah. you find him. Yeah. He's naked. Yeah. Um, that's a weird way to end the show, but uh, <laughs> let's do the vote. Uh, so, but yeah. we'll look at naked Kyle XY when we do it. So the, ch- the, the, <laughs> so the choices are... Uh, so, uh, I forgot to write it down. Say it again. Space Truckers. Okay, Space Truckers. We also have Forbidden, Forbidden Planet. Planet. Hard boiled if we want to go out and get it, and the covenant. and the covenant. So, the rating, the voting system on here is just kind of vote for the one, the one you want. That makes sense. But I'm gonna, I get kind of multiple votes, and so just don't, don't get, you know. He has veto power. I have veto power, so just keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> so, if you want to vote for, sp- oh, man, let's let's start with you because I'm Space Truckers is to me I think the most con- the contender. Uh, but we'll see. Forbidden Planet. Uh, yeah, I want I want Forbidden Planet. But you gotta I raise your hand. Speed. Mm. Mike. Um. Well, let me just raise I your hand. If you're going. Just, okay. Yeah. No, well, I was not, telling you to Forbidden shut your phone. Planet. Are we on Forbidden Planet? Yeah. And then now the next one, Hard Boiled. Who wants to vote for Hard Boiled? So it's one to one right now. Sorry, Kyle. Yeah, sorry, Kyle. It's just not on Tubi. So All right. How about the Covenant? Huh? Bunch of warlocks. One to one to one. Hey, unraise a hand. I really don't want to fucking watch that. Oh, good the lord. Guy, okay, well then, uh, space, it's space war, truckers. Man. It's it's a... space truckers. Okay, mm-hmm. you're the deciding vote. Well, wait. Oh, so then it's just. Oh, so I vote for space truckers, and then. Wow, this was like a bad voting. Yeah, Kyle, what did you one, vote one, for? One one one. That's the problem. Uh, hard boiled. Yeah. But you can't vote. That one's off the table now. <laughs> it might be on YouTube. I don't know. Because we're tied. But, one, one, but one. no one else voted for it. Okay, yeah. 
So. It's time for your randomizer. You, your one. Oh one yeah, you're, I guess. Fuck it. Let's, one one one. Let's, you're on yeah. your randomizer. All right. Chat. Everyone voted for their own. Movie. Everybody voted for their own movie. <laughs> Nobody'd come off of it. So. All right. <laughs> you do randomize one through three. Here, I'll just just. The order we did them in, Space Truckers is one. I was thinking about being more two. creative for Chet. It'd be like, uh, and Hard Boiled is three. Here's, here oh, give those three movies. Pick one for us. Of movies. Yeah, pick one. <laughs> and make it dramatic. What is make it dramatic? Okay, <laughs> let's see. Space Truckers. Forbidden Planet. Oh, yeah, let's do it in order. Forbidden, oh, this is fun podcasting. Uh, <laughs> Forbidden Planet. And The Covenant. No, and, yeah. and Hard Boiled. Oh, no, no, we're taking that one We off. can't. We can't. It's not on. It's yeah. not on you, well, then you got to put and. Forbidden Planet and The Covenant. You really like your, okay. There's text one, yeah. I got you. No, no comma. No, no, I like the Oxford comma. <laughs> I always but do. We're not going to do an Oxford comma debate. I always <laughs> Oxford comma. I, I don't like that people don't Oxford comma. You don't Oxford comma? No, it sounds just... Putting, it sounds like an excuse to put a comma where it should be. No, I think it should be there. That's why Oxford uh, backs it up. It's how you uh, speak, right? Yeah. Spa the what covenant. did I write? The covenant. covenant. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> All right, the covenant. Choose one. Randomly. Yeah. Oh, randomly. Pick one. I wanted to actually think about Based it. Based on. How good it is? How good no. How is it? No. Make, okay. How like, about this? Choose one. <laughs> Make up a random metric on which to Watch. judge these movies. <laughs> oh my god. It's going to take four hours to do this. <laughs> I don't have any ideas. Explain what, what? that <laughs> metric is. <laughs> and, and then... Choose, choose a movie for my podcast to review. That's good. Keep in mind <laughs> that my podcast is a marijuana based. Can you able to do that? Uh, movie review. Please <laughs> reveal you want to make the it out, answer in a dramatic <laughs> fashion. Dramatic, drawn out fashion. <laughs> That's all it does. It just, just pauses. It is what it does when you tell it dramatic. It drawn out. <laughs> You're going to read all this, so drawn out is maybe not the best Fashion. Add a, no joke, limits. add a joke or two. <laughs> <laughs> make it a rant. <laughs> make it peppy. <laughs> Love you. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Wow, that is the most interesting. Okay, well, that's pretty fast. Yeah, it's great. I love ChatGPT. All right. What the the oh, yeah. oh, my God. All right, here we go. All right, let's spice up your marijuana-themed movie review podcast with a Wait, unique... Wait, we have Kyle read it? Oh, he yes. hasn't fucking said anything the whole show, yeah. dude. Make him make it some noise. <laughs> oh, God, he's just going to come out and give... Look, yeah. now, it's, now it's homework. Like, all right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's really drawing it out. Holy shit. Fuck it. We're already at almost two and a half hours. This is just an extra long, this be stupid episode. Great, right? We have the answer, but we, we'll we get yes. to it. For the listeners at home, they don't need to yeah. know that we've already seen it. So we're going to read it out. I love you too. And we're going to what? No, we're, I'm, we're going to read it okay, out. So yeah, don't say absolutely. the answer yet. No, I'm not. Don't say yeah. the answer. No, I just like it. But the very. Yeah, well, okay, but don't. Yeah. I'm not going to say it. No. You I'm did, but okay. Damn it. Okay, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin that. That's no. funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is so. Th it's so this is good. Great. It's right. It's spot on. You know, you read, it's gonna here, let's not have them do all of it. How about this? How about you read? Okay, Kyle, because you're, we're gonna have you read some stuff now. All right, cool. You ready? All right, is this cool. is this text big enough? Do you want me to make it bigger? No, uh, I can see it. All right, we're starting up here and making it. You know, you're the announcer now. You're about to reveal the winner and everything. All right, so. Let's spice up your marijuana-themed movie review podcast with 
a unique tailor-made metric, the cosmic hyometer. The playful scale measures how well a movie complements the cannabis experience based on three key components. Visual feast factor, the level of visual spectacle and special effects that can be extra entertaining under the influence. That's good. I like that, yeah. Number two is mind bendiness, how much the movie challenges or plays with the viewer's perception and thoughts. Great. And three is chill to thrill ratio, the balance between relaxed, easygoing scenes and intense edge of your seat moments. Austin, that's crazy. You want to take right. over? Now let's evaluate our movie candidates. And, and let me just let me okay, real quick, because you're a guest, Kyle. I'm going to let you just do you, and I like it. Just you, you're just doing you. But Austin, you're a performer. I want you to sell this. <laughs> he has the experience. I, I want don't. you to fucking yeah. sell this. This is our movie candidates. Really sell them because Mike's going to send it home with the reveal. Now let's evaluate our movie candidates. Number one, Space Truckers. This quirky space adventure is like ordering a pizza with every topping. It's an unexpected mix, but somehow it works. With its over-the-top Stupid. effects and a plot that's more twisted than a pretzel in yoga class. Oh, that's funny. It yeah. scores high on the visual feast factor and mind bendiness. Whoop, whoop. Number two is Forbidden Planet. A classic that's like fine wine. It gets better with age. Its vintage sci-fi charm and cerebral plot offer more mellow but intellectually stimulating experience. Ooh, hell it's yeah. like the wise old sage of sci-fi movies, offering deep thoughts with a side of retro visuals. Okay. Now, number three, The Covenant. Okay. Think Don't understand. <laughs> Austin, no, no sell I want you to no, sell it. No, come on. We just It's already made a decision. Don't yeah. undersell my movie, you bitch. <laughs> the Covenant. Okay. <laughs> the Covenant. Think of this as a roller coaster that wasn't quite scary, but still made you scream. It's a bit more of a thriller with a supernatural twist, offering less of a cosmic and more of the earthly chills. It's like dipping your toes into a shallow end of a pool. Thrilling, but safe. Wow, that doesn't sound great at all. Yeah, fuck. Okay, well, wow, you really didn't like it either, fucking. uh, uh, Okay. Uh, Now, drum roll, please. Okay. For your one of a kind. Puff Puff Pass Movie Review Podcast. The winner is Space Truckers. Woo! Why? Why? All right. Imagine this. You're floating in the galaxy of your mind, and here comes a convoy of interstellar 18-wheelers loaded with laughs, bizarre scenes, and visual effects that are like a fireworks display in a kaleidoscope. It's the perfect companion for when you're as high as as the ISS and looking for a movie that says Logic. Where we're going, we don't need logic. Oh, boy. So grab your favorite strain, sit back, and let space truckers take you on a ride that's more fun than finding a hidden snack in the couch cushions. Enjoy the show, and remember in space, no one can hear you snack. And then you can do the... Well, then it 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 tells me, love you too, and happy reviewing. (laughs) Which I think is a nice touch from ChatGPT, if we're being honest. Um, It really cares. Uh, so anyway, we're going to do that from now on, I think. I think so, too. This was amazing. What you can do is I like. Well, no, I already got this. I'm going to save this it. as our metric. Right. And we can go to this one specifically yeah, every single metric, time and just yeah. use it. I can just add the next list. So, perfect. All right. So, great. We're watching That's Space amazing. Truckers. Yeah, so, what we'll be, do that. We'll do is pick our three or four movies, five movies. We got this. Yeah, it's going to be it's great. Be great. Uh, let's do some. All right. Anybody want some plugs on the way out? Oh, we got a question, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so we have a number. You go to it. Uh, We go to friedricepodcast.com. That's our website. On the bottom, there's a number. It's 702-829-0117. It's a voicemail. It's not live. It's not going to – it's a voicemail. Don't worry. No one's going to answer. We ask questions. There's one every week. They're posted on our Instagram. They're posted uh, on the website eventually. Uh, You'll find them. Uh, Answer any question you want. Uh, We don't care what order you – it'll be fun for us. It's like opening up a little time capsule if I were to – Pandora's box, right. Yeah, open up a voicemail and you're telling us about your favorite childhood movie when we're asking about like, you know, what's the – whatever. It might be a palate cleanser. We might have just done Terrifier and we get to – I hope we never do Terrifier again. Well, there is is Terrifier 2. No, Mike. (laughs) Stop. We're not watching Terrifier 2. Uh, <laughs> well, Bob's going to get to pick a movie soon. That's the... Well, <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. Because I don't want the reveal. What reveal? Well, I don't know. Shit. It's here every week. 
Well, okay. Damn it. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just going to cut this out real quick. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's the number. Our question this week is... Let's see. We're doing space truckers, so... The fuck does that? Uh, <laughs> no, that's what I was okay, so that's a combination, I would say, of two things that you wouldn't see in a movie. You wouldn't take sci-fi and convoy. And you truck, wouldn't take yeah. you wouldn't take Star Wars and convoy and put them in a movie together. Well, someone did. <laughs> so, what is another mashup movie? Mashup. That's good. Yeah. That sort of rings that same kind of bell. That sort of bell ringer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. That's sort of you know whatever. Um, I like that question. Got anything movie, better? Yeah. Favorite What's mashup it? movie? Yeah. Favorite mashup movie is a good well, question. Maybe yeah. that's a, uh, whatever. I think that's a little of genre mashups. But then that's just like homework for people. Yeah. How about like something just more personal? How about like? How about um, what's your favorite mashup movies? Just. To... Have we done what's our favorite shit to watch while we're high? No. no. Let's do that. What's your favorite shit to watch while you're high? Just put on the background and chill. Or are you talking about like like? A... No, watch while you're high. Yeah, I can enjoy. I'll tell you one thing you that I've always watched. That uh, this is just something you can watch. Uh, and if you like it, you can agree on the voicemail uh, that it's the Daft Punk Interstellar five 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 five. It's like forty something minutes long. It's their album Discovery, beginning to end, and what they just did an anime on it. Like starts. I mean, I'm not going to give it away, but it's right. just like the entire thing is a story told exclusively through music. It's an anime about aliens and Earth and. It's very good. The album is one of my favorites. So if you like Daft Punk in general, you'll like it. It's got um, bangers on there that you'll recognize. Like, one more time. You know, like that one. Um, uh, but anyway, Interstellar 5 for 5. You watch that while you're high, it's just, that's a good time. It's visually pleasing. The music's great. You can just sit back and just fucking vibe. I always, when I'm high, I always do like old 50s and 60s, like horror sci-fi like really crazy stuff like uh, forbid you were mentioning Forbidden Planet earlier yeah. but Forbidden there's another Forbidden something that's got like her villages in it and like it's just weird out there stuff crazy things I like to watch when I'm high like that or like uh, I'll get high and then watch uh, the anti getting high movies you know mm-hmm. <laughs> like just, sure it's funny I guess, yeah. Yeah, just chill. What, what do you like? Yeah, I guess what do you like watching when you're high? I guess it's going to yeah. be different for every person. Some people probably like watch a bunch of different shit, you know? Mine's a little wild. It's uh, Metallica Through the Never. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that know. movie. It's like a live concert, but there's also so a story Dane, going on. In the is that Dane Hahn or uh, uh, what's his name? The guy from Invincible? Uh, Not Invincible. Was it called Invincible? Um, Dane Hahn. Uh, from, well, it's uh, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets is the. Uh, the movie oh, I remember when we were kids, we used to watch Dane that. DeHaan. Yeah, this guy, is, yeah, yeah, kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, this guy's dope. Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. That's I will movie. always stand by as yeah, a great a movie. movie. Uh, I also think Chronicle. Chronicle also is good. so yeah. good. Is that on Tubi? Can we know. just do that one? No, we, well, we can't change, but we can have it in mind if it is. It's not. It's not. No, it's not. But, but it will. It's one that will eventually come on. That could be show. Andy's solo reviews. It could be. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting to do solo reviews too. That's kind oh of yeah, ladies and gentlemen, to... pay attention on uh, whatever our website, Patreon. I don't know what we're going to do with it. We haven't discussed it yet, but I'm doing like little solo mini reviews too, where it's just me. Um, uh, just doing movies that I wanted to watch that everyone else doesn't vote on because no one knows well, what. See, I do the same thing, kind of on on the bend over flip. Oh yeah, we side. also have that was that was I gave you an opportunity to plug. You should yeah, say go I'm to the bend over. What, I know I didn't think of it, but I was saying I put like when I do this because I have like a four page review of the Goonies. I put the whole thing up there every week. Yeah. And then what I've started doing is now I'm going back and when we do the things like this week, I've got three three other movies to watch. I'm going to watch, this just goes in my watch list and I watch them as I get time. I also review the ones that we didn't pick. Yeah, so if you want extra reviews so, that we don't cover that we also talk about, you can go to bendover.com. Bendoverflix. No, 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 I would oh. not suggest bendover.com. Don't go to bendover.com. It's, go to bendoverflix. It's bendoverflix.com. F-L-I-X. Bendoverflix.com. <laughs> you can read Michael's AI old man reviews. Mm-hmm. Um it's kind of a combination, yeah. He's been he's been making an old man AI like client, um, my and it's personality been, kind of put into an AI. So if that's something that does it for you, if you're one of those niche kind of mic lovers out there, uh, our smallest <laughs> subsect of fans, if you're one of the if you're one of the if you're one of the mic, uh, oh god, we got to come up with a fan base name for you. <laughs> 
and so that for that one person, uh, your wife, to be able to call herself when she listens to the, to the episodes. Um, anyway, so uh, we're doing slap, oh slap stickers. Yes, yeah, the, the slap sticks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the slap sticks. Or, oh, like, or Mike things. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mike I things. So. This movie makes <laughs> me miss <laughs> man thing. Oh yeah, that was such a real thing. So that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. This is a long one. A lot of it was probably dead air. It's probably one of our <laughs> slower paced ones. I'm sorry. Not a whole lot of arguments. I mean, I don't know if that's what you're here for, or if this was a better one because of all that. <laughs> This might have been one of our better episodes. Now that I think about it, you're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. And we to were be straight. Fair, Kyle didn't have. This is Kyle's first podcast he was ever on ever. Probably his first ever performative thing ever. So. I mean, he's here every week because, as always. <laughs> but um, I this is the first time we've gotten him to talk. Right. And boy, did he sort of do that. Um, so, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, sort of. Uh, so we're gonna do space music because of. Um, Space truckers. Space truckers right. Oh, you know what? No, no. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do mm-hmm. is I'm gonna put space music, mm-hmm. but for truckers. Oh. <laughs> no. Let's see if it even gives me. Sp- space oh wow! Trucker space trucker music. music. It does have an option. Yeah. Fuck. Of course it does. <laughs> no, that's the Halo theme. It's a. Fa- it's a playlist. Yeah. No, that's all real shit. It's we can't playlist, do that. Right? Uh, hold on. ChatGPT is our friend. <laughs> We just ask him again. That's all we got to do. We just go, hey. What's a space Wait, hold on. truck hey, or something? Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, can you give me a recommendation? Wait, recommendation. Oh, Jesus. Rec- can you give me a rec for... <laughs> a spelling tutor. No, uh, music. <laughs> music. To listen to um, while being a space trucker. Trucker. It needs to be, you gotta tell it's gotta be copyright free. Copyright free. And also, like, (laughs) if I were (laughs) a space trucker. With a lot of Oxford commas. (laughs) What if I were a space trucker? I would probably like Western music, but <laughs> it's also the future. So who knows, right? <laughs> the conversational chat GP, TP is interesting because I'm Anyways. still using 3.5. How are you? How's your mom? <laughs> your mom. <laughs> Love you. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm nice to AI. You never know. Hello there. It's great to hear from you. I'm here, ready to assist as always. As for my mom, I suppose you could say she's doing well in, in the vast world of data and algorithms. Oh, okay, great. You should check in more. Uh, <laughs> thanks for asking and love received and returned. Thanks for your space trucker music adventure. Blending the vibe of Western tunes with a futuristic twist sounds like a fun and unique idea. Here's a few suggestions for copyright fee. Synthwave with a Western twist. That's exactly what I need. That's what I fucking wanted. Thank you, Jet Chat GPT. It does the algorithm, so I don't have to. All right. Oh, I'm breaking the internet. It's 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 collecting my data. All right, here we go. Synthwave with a Western twist. No copyright. Oh, come space on. Space wave. Space wave. Synth. The second one down, right there. Cosmic no, but that's pulse. space, space wave. wave. It doesn't say Western. Oh. I thought it did. Space Wave Synth Wave West. Man, didn't I just apologize to the people at home for having like this dead air and shit? Oh, oh, Electro Country. That has to give us something, right? Electro Country? And this is to end the show with. We're looking for music to end the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Country Western. Electro electro Swing Music. uh, Country Folk. Country Music. Electro Music. Deep Stone, Country, country rock, rock, Electric, electric blues. blues. Two minutes. Upbeat electric background. <laughs> I feel like we could try one more variation. <laughs> Chill step with Western samples. Is that, you think that's going to give us? Know. 
instrumental bluegrass oh, with wait. electronic yeah. overtones yeah. would be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Look, we're giving Kyle over here a hard on. He's like, I never even, I never even thought of these as a fucking option before. Yeah, Chad GP, GT. Bro, yeah. I, if you're willing to make music for us for no reason uh, other than to just put your shit out there, this is the kind of shit I would love. It's yeah, just like, we'll just give us play. chill step with Western samples. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. Uh, okay. That's like a hot dog uh, burger stuff, with stuff. pizza. <laughs> Hell yeah, it sounds delicious. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna go with this. Wait. No, I can do better. I can do better. For the <laughs> listeners at home, I can do better because this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna also put space ambient music. Yeah, play both at the same time? Yeah. That's how you do it. Will the lion do that? Space music. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, it's going to allow me to do it. Let's get the space music going first. It takes up the most space. You guys like that? This, is it's this... Chill or no, is this space? Can this isn't space, music? no. Just type in spaceship noises or yeah, something. Yeah, that's what I want. Space... Oh, this is ambient space. I'll like, it thinks ambient, I'm some yeah. fucking... Uh, on a, like I'm, I'm like I'm like I'm yoga, yoga yeah. yeah like I need some ambient space no 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 I want spaceship uh, noise spaceship takeoff sound effect boom let's go 15 seconds <laughs> oh shit oh, um. <laughs> that was pretty good though if you could loop it it would work yeah it would be great I can't loop it no this isn't gonna fucking work um uh, <laughs> I ruined it. Whatever. This is what we're doing now. It's just country. Uh, bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop. That's the space. Ah, oh, fuck. This was... Hey, welcome to the Fried Rice Podcast where we need to end shit 30, 40 minutes earlier. Uh, <laughs> this has been Fried Rice Podcast. I've been your host, Danny Ross. With me, as always, is Michael. Man, I'd love to put him in an airlock and just fucking shoot him out in the fucking space. Am I right? Larson! Hey, have a good week, everybody. Super Bowl's this weekend for us. I hope uh, the Chiefs won. Uh, let, and if you're not a Chiefs fan, you know. I hope the other team won if you're not, right? What, yeah, what well, are, shit. Way to be a flip flopper. I hope the Chiefs lose now <laughs> because of your wishy washy fan dedication, you bastard. With me, as always, is Austin. He uh, rode his horse. Out in the, the sun, sunset, you know what, when they say that, right, I think a, a, a stand-up comic or maybe a TED Talks talked about this, why would a cowboy ride off into the sunset, always into the sunrise, because you want to get a whole day's worth of riding, you don't ride off, you don't leave the town, the safety, the house that you're in, to, and then you go, oh, looks like night's coming, time to leave, no, that's not how fucking it used to work back in the day, anyway, you get it, he did it the right way, Austin left at... When, when the sun was rising and he, he got here during the daytime. Feral! Goonies never say die. <laughs> With us as always is he's silent but deadly. And what I mean by that is that he's killed three people since he's been here and he's put their bodies in the fucking murder in the room. room. <laughs> it's, it, it's Kyle, hopefully the newest member of Fried Rice Podcast in the music department just fucking bleep blorping away yeah, I was there. What's yeah, that? I was here. I was there, man. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. And I'm your host, Andy Rice. This has been a long, <laughs> fucking drawn out, weird, but we didn't interrupt each other as much. So, like, I'm happy with that episode of Fried Rice Podcast. The music just ended naturally. This is how it goes. <laughs> fucking good night. Peace. Peace. Hey, man, have you ever heard of Fried Rice Podcast? Fried Rice Podcast? Yeah, man, they're a podcast that reviews movies, and a new one comes out every Saturday on YouTube. They're sponsored by Bell Ringers. Bell Ringers? Yeah, Bell Ringers. It's a adapter for your bong or hookah, and it holds three joints, three blunts, three bowls, or three dabs. Three dabs? Yeah, man, three dabs. 
So check us out every Saturday on YouTube at Fried Rice Podcast, sponsored by Bell Ringers.